We'll call the regular meeting in the New Alm City Council for June 6, 2017, 4.30 <coughs> p.m. to order. First item on the agenda is your consent agenda items. What's your wishes on them? I'll offer a motion to approve those. Second. second. We got a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda items. Any discussion on any? Just a con one comment, Mr. President. I know our city manager's finished up his one year as president of the Minnesota City County Managers Association. Was that three, four hundred members, Brian? Yeah, about 225. 225. So thank you for your, your time on that. Mm. Those, anytime you become president of those associations, their work, I know that. So thank you. Any other discussion? See it none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. Motion carries. Item 2A. Consider a motion approving the fireworks license for the American Promotional Events Incorporated, TNT Fireworks Incorporated. I'll offer the motion. Second. We got a motion and a second. Any discussion? See none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. Motion carries. Item 2B. Consider a motion approving the issuance of temporary on sale liquor permit for Cypher Benj. Permit. Can't even say it. Bianchi. Bianchi. American Legion Post 132. I'll offer that motion. Second. second. We got a motion to second. Any discussion? It's for an event at Riverside Park um, July, 3. July 3rd. No more discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item 2C, consider a motion approving the issuance of general licenses for the period beginning July 1st, 2017 and ending June 30th, 2018. That's for tobacco, fireworks, kennels, mechanical amusement, sheep, solid waste hauler, taxi cab, and tree service. I'll offer the motion. Second. second. We got a motion to second. Any more discussion? Seeing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item 2A, number one, consider a resolution approving with one condition a request from Leon Crawl for a simple lot division of the property located at 310 20th North Street. I'd just like to add the, the Planning Commission met. Uh, we recommended approval um, with conditions, uh, for, and the condition was to plot it with the Brown County Recorder. With that, I'll offer the resolution, waive the reading, approving uh, with the one condition um, as stated on here. Second. We got a motion and a second to offer the resolution, waive the reading. Any more discussion? Seeing none, finance director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Mack? Yes. Councilor Schultz? Yes. Councilor Christian? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Motion carries. Item 3A, number two, consider a resolution approving the application for Shade Schmidt. Requesting a conditional use permit to place a special purpose fence on the property located at 626 South Franklin Street. And again, the uh, Planning Commission recommended approval. The fence was actually put up before and it was caught, you know, after it was put up. And we looked at it, but if you look at your packet, you'll see that the topography of the lot, it's a lower sunk lot. And we we recommended you know, unanimously approving it. Uh, yeah. With the Planning Commission's unanimous you know, recommendation, I'll motion to offer a resolution, waive the reading, approving with the conditions. Second. We got a motion and a second to offer a resolution, waive the reading. Any more discussion? So this was a fence that was put up after, put up and then there was a, um, an application. So it's Correct, because he wasn't. So there's no penalty for that, there's no you can just do ask you know, for permission later to make a comment on that it's fences a are <laughs> it's a unique situation fences are very unique i mean people will come in they we request a drawing a lot of times the topography isn't on it they just say yes my fence is going to be 48 inches high in the front yard building official issues the permit goes out and the yard goes at a 45 degree angle it's situations like that and when i drove by that there's this i know we've issued these before with topography issues granted it, it does meet the requirements for the front yard for the height if you're at the sidewalk level, you know, the way our right. ordinance explains it. I mean, the city does have a policy in effect. If somebody does start a project, you can charge them double. You're not a popular department anyway, so normally we didn't charge them double. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 
you know, and, and you know, the homeowner's trying to improve his property and it's, it's on a corner lot and he's trying to pick a patio area and privacy, you know, to enhance it. So we just, yeah, just curious. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any more discussion? Seeing none. Do we have a resolution? Yep. Yes. Okay. No more discussion? Finance Director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Mack? Yes. Councilor Schultz? Yes. Councilor Christian? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Motion carries. Item 3B, number one, consider a variance request of the first choice pregnancy services to place a 10 foot by 10 foot storage shed three feet from the side property line at 1223 South Broadway. And again, I would like to add that the Board of Zoning of and Adjustment recommended approval of the request uh, with conditions and the conditions, they would like to stay three feet off the property line. And then the condition is to put in a fire resistant wall facing their neighbor's uh, building. And it's a unique situation. You know, they need as much parking as they can, and they need storage. And it's what I don't the, see that condition added on part of our. Does just get missed in our report? Uh, it should be line well, there item it is. I'm two. Sorry. I'm sorry. It is there item two. And they were aware of it, and the neighbors were okay with it also. So no complaints by the neighbors or anything. No. Okay. I'm going to offer the motion or to accept the variance request. Second. We got a motion and a second to accept the request. Any more discussion? This is at 1223 South Broadway and a 10 by 10 storage shed. It is with, condition, with conditions. With conditions, excuse me, yes. Thank you. No more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item 2B, number two. Consider an application of Christopher Schrader requesting a variance from the city code to allow a storage shed addition to be located within six feet of the rear side of the property line at 21 Camelsback Road. I think, Charlie, that was six, six inches. inches. You said six, six inches, feet. sorry. Yes. Not six feet. And again, the Board of Zoning Adjustment recommended approval of the request. If you look previously in 1980, there was a variance to grant it. At, um, previously and the shed he wants to add an, uh, an addition onto the shed for storage reasons it's not going to come out past the front of the existing home there were no complaints from any of the neighbors um, the alley is vacated and it's a unique situation again I don't know. We don't have too many of these six inches next to a property line. I no, but the nearest building any? is 75 feet away from it, too, from the neighbors for the yeah. backyard, for the fence on that aspect. That's, uh, and, you know, they run a daycare and they've got a lot of bicycles and trikes and bouncy things. And it's, uh, special need, you know, circumstances. With that, I'm going to offer the motion to accept the variance application. Second. We got a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item 4A, consider a motion to receive a survey information from Hanu regarding the potential use of the rectangular rapid flashing beacon on 4th South and Broadway. Cindy. Cindy Winters, the Harding New Home Project and President and Council Members. Thanks for inviting me back and allowing me to provide you with the information that we found out as a result of asking parents asking new home residents that live in the area whether they would use a an rrfb located at south fourth street or not so during our conversations in your packet you also have a student density map that was created by the region 9 development commission and this map was developed using all of the addresses that the 
public school, private school, U, um, NUAX, and St. Paul's Elementary School gave to Region 9 Development Commission so that they could identify where students live in New Ulm. And um, on the map also is a darker line for where 4th, um, 4th South Street is. So you know where that potential light would go. And then as far as asking um, residents input, a survey was developed and a link to the survey was sent to all of the school districts as well and the school sent it out to the parents through their um, newsletter and then hard copies were made and mailed to residents whose addresses didn't show up on the school address list that lived in the area that would potentially use that um, crossing. I didn't mail to people north of the city or up on top of the hill, but people that lived in the area. And so, the, and you have a list of the questions. So, um, and it was mailed out to about 1,300 hard copies were mailed out to individuals in the <coughs> community as well. So 289 people completed portions of the survey. Some questions were skipped, and I don't know um, the way the hard copy came out, the, f the description of the survey and a picture of what the light would look like was on the first page and the first question was at the very bottom of the page and I think some people may have missed that. Um, so 17 people missed that question but 268 answered it and of those two, um, 106 people said that they would use the light and 138 said no and 24 said that they would maybe use it. And that was to let their kids them themselves use it or their kids use it to walk to school. And then we asked questions about getting to different amenities on either side of South Broadway Street. Um, so the first question, the second question we asked was, would you use it to get to amenities on the east side of South Broadway, such as the dog park, St. Mary's Church, downtown, daycare, et cetera? And 283 people answered this question. 111 said that they would use it, and 135 said no, and 37 people said maybe. And question number three was, would you use a pedestrian activated light to get to amenities on the west side of the street, such as the schools, library, hospital, parks and recreation, and daycare? And 278 people answered this question. 115 people said that they would use it. 137 people said no. And 26 people said maybe. And then we just asked different questions about what other intersections in town would prevent them from walking or biking because of speed of traffic. And then um, we also asked about streets and speed for further use for the Safe Routes to School team and what we want to work on to improve safety around walking and biking to school. Anybody have any questions for Cindy? Well, Mr. President, I think when I was one of the counselors that asked for more information before we would move forward on looking at a light <coughs> in this direction, and um, at that time we didn't really have a lot of data on would anybody use this crossing. I mean, we're going to build something and hope people would come. Um, what I appreciated from this survey was a couple things. One that said um, it was probably the last, yeah, the last question that we have on this survey. Um, that what streets are you most hesitant to cross? And Broadway was the number one per um, street, which it is. It's a fast street. There's a lot of um, industrial traffic um, zipping by going on that. And then also the we come in like second, if I remember correctly, on um, the kids don't like to cross. Um, certainly with Garden and Center being the number one one because there's a lot of traffic there. But right. so I, I appreciate this survey. I think it helps move this project um, forward in my opinion so thank you mm -hmm. Cindy do you have any information on how often they would use it no that wasn't <coughs> one of the questions we didn't ask that I didn't you know I had a number of people that couldn't talk to me afterwards and people that jog people that run people that bike that want to cross in that in that general area um, and they said, you want an opinion? I would like a safe crossing there. So whether it's adult, not just for kids, but also for adults that want to cross in that area as well. And then with the addition of the dog park being in that area, um, along with the other parks, um, you know, we got the skate park and the, 
um, the BMX park down in that general region and general area that um, we have little folks who run in across that street that would certainly make that a little safer in that direction as well too. So, um, so I'm going to offer a motion to um, receive the survey information regarding potential use of the rectangular flashing beacon on Broadway and South 4th Street. Second. We got a motion to second. Any more discussion? And going back when we were looking at this, this was for five years down the road, wasn't mm -hmm. it? I think it was 2021. So yeah, 2021. Like yeah, that, you know, so just kind of. So we're not making a decision today. We're just no. approving we're just or approving receiving the report. Receiving the survey. Yeah. report. You know. I think that's step one of their process that they need to move forward on. So. Okay. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Thank you, Cindy. Mm -hmm. Item 4B, consider resolution approving the installation of a bicycle friendly signage at eight ro roadway entrances to the city subject to authorization of the roadway authorities. Cindy. <laughs> <laughs> So Cindy Winters, hard in your own project. Um, I was asked to, to ask the city council's permission to, to purchase um, the bicycle friendly designation signs and the signs uh, don't designate what level you're at so that they can be used if a community continues to move up or stays at a level. The signs are good for four years and there are currently eight entrances into the community and it would be um, really help promote the community and help I think tourism as well to promote that we are a bicycle friendly community and have made some efforts to improve bicycling and bicycling um, tourism is a huge industry in the state of Minnesota. You have the map there do you want to put that on the overhead so the public can see where they're lo looking at proposing? This map printed out much larger <coughs> than what. So it's all the. All the red dots are the proposed entrances to the community, and the state highway. Um, the trunk highways there is a there is a limit that you can only have three signs on your on those entrance signs and right now there's currently only two signs on there I went and took a picture of all of them so there's the fit city and the tree city signs are on those entrance signs so basically just on the entrances to our community mm hmm So with that, I'll offer a resolution approving the installation of bike-friendly signage at eight roadway entrances to the city, uh, subject to authorization from roadway authorities. Second. We got a motion and a second to offer, res offer the resolution. Wave reading. Any more discussion? What? A uh, question I would have uh, would be really for the city engineer's office is who's going to do the paperwork on the state and the county? Uh, Mr. President, we will we will contact MnDOT as well as the Brown County Engineer. Not certain if there's a permit process with either of them, but I wanted to make sure that it, this moved forward from here before before I went to them. I think we probably need to update our Tree City uh, signs at the same time because they were all a little different. So we'll, we'll take care of it. Okay. Thank you. Question. Anything else? Seeing nothing. Finance Director, please call the roll. Councillor Fisher? Yes. Councillor Mack? Yes. Councillor Schultz? Yes. Councillor Christian? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Motion carries. Item 4C, consider resolution to continue Phase 1 Cheryl routes and to implement Phase 2 routes. Hey. Mr. President, um, last, uh, let's see when it's all, <coughs> last May, I believe, you, the City Council approved a phase one Cheryl route that was installed by street department personnel 
last year and then I think in July there was another presentation of a phase two through phase five and you've got that map attached to your agenda item or to your uh, items mm -hmm. uh, at that time the routes were just received they weren't technically ordered in so we wanted to come back to the City Council there is some maintenance costs that are involved with not only the initial installation but also the uh, annual maintenance costs so um, every time you add one of these routes we're uh, having the street department go out and use paint and personnel probably to the tune of about six thousand uh, dollars for the initial setup and about five for the repaint so there's a cost associated with it if you want us to move ahead with uh, repainting phase one we'll do that and if you want to order in phase two we can do that as well there's a map phase zero routes attached there since we have Mr. Curry here, could I ask him a couple questions on, because last year was new, we weren't we're just going into this, and I'd like to hear how all that went, and problems or no problems, or can you kind of give us your input? Well, no, we did the first phase last yeah. year, uh, 188 Cheryl's. It took us roughly two and a half weeks okay. of uh, painting okay. to do it, the tune of 63, something I believe it was 65 um, like Mr. Kaler stated to repaint will be a little faster as we don't have to set up the uh, measure off the curb and set the stencil okay. that's already done we just have to put it on top of the existing one there's some question about how long some of them still look like they're in pretty good shape and I know we were worried about what the salt would do to them over the winter months of course we didn't have a really bad winter this time around so we didn't use a lot of salt and Correct. sand that's probably why some still look pretty good. So do all of them really need <coughs> to be repainted? No, Could they don't all need to be repainted, but they're really going to stick out if we, if, you don't. Mm -hmm. if we don't. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, and that dollar cost, is that labor cost? That is correct. So it was still, it wasn't new staff brought in to pay, or that you paid, or no, was it? No, there was not. So it was not new staff hired. So these were current employees anyway. That is correct. That were on the payroll. Yes. So, okay. So they were, they had a shift of duties, more correct. or less. Yes. Thank you. Okay. One item I do want to bring to the public's attention, though, it's always the long haul down the road when these are all installed, who's going to pay for them. The projection here, you want know, $20,000 plus per year painting costs to redo them just so they're aware of that when budget time comes when you're looking at 20 grand a year to seal coat roads they have to be done wear and tear just to mention that well, I'd like to maybe add that currently we're we're funding this with a grant that they received last year but so uh, but I mean after no, this year it's, it's done so as normal when grants run out the correct. city picks the tab up so how so much is the paint you know yeah. of the six thousand dollars what how much was the paint current If I brought that with me, the paint was the guess, roughly oh five hundred. I'm gonna so guess. It's a special kind of paint, if I remember right. Our conversation it, about it, that. It is. It's it's uh, traffic marking paint, the same we do with crosswalks and or, and uh, parking stalls and etc. You know, one thing to consider: we can, if we go to another phase. We're going to have to get another metal stencil, which is about $600, which we can do. We had it made in town. Um, we bought a new paint machine to replace the old one we had in when we kept the old one. So we're going to have to have two paint crews go out, and we can absorb that one more phase. But if we do any more than one more phase, we're going to need another crew. If we, I have to do all of these eventually, we're not going to be able to do it in-house. We're going to have to add. Farm it out. Well, or add seasonal. I guess I'd like to maybe add, I had somebody approach me and ask, ask if we could be considering to put signage in for long term so we're not just doing the painting if, you know, for in the community. That's what I was just going to gonna suggest too. Because just, just they would last a heck of a lot longer. If we put and then we're not spending $20,000, you know. There's and we have that signage per, that purchase, discussion, Miss Winters, when we talked about that last year? Do you remember our why we didn't go that route or I know there was discussion in that area 
Cindy Winters, Hard and Neuron Project. Part of what Cheryl's do is they also indicate where you're supposed to be writing in the in on the street, like what direction? Because I have seen people writing in town against traffic, um, even on a street that has Cheryl's. So we do, we do have a lot of education yet to do, and that's in the plan for the Hard and for the um, Safe Routes to School program. And it also lets the the writer know when they're writing on a street that has parking, which almost all these streets have parking along them, where to ride if there is a car parked along the street to stay out of the door zone so they don't get doored because you can have um, some really severe injuries if you're riding and not paying close attention to whether someone's in the car and getting, and getting out of the car. Um, so and it's also kind of more of a visual cue to the driver for them to slow down and expect, I know you expect to see um, bicyclists around, along that route. You would see that with the sign, but it's, because you don't see a lot of markings on the street, it's more of a visual than a signage because signage can sometimes get lost with all the other signs that are out there. Got a question. Mm -hmm. you, are the people on bicycles supposed to drive right where the markings are? The they Cheryl? can. They don't have to. But if there is a car parked, then they should ride with those along those Sherrows. I'm just going to make a statement. Okay. And it was shortly after we painted the first ones. I was going down Garden Street, and for three blocks, there was this senior citizen ahead of me, and he was going on the Cheryl, and there was no one car on the outside. There was okay. four cars behind me, cars coming, and you think he'd move over? No. We need education. Well, and, and I'll yes, tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. The young people that we worry about getting in accidents, mm -hmm. they're the most courteous drivers there are. It's the people my age and above that are the worst in this town. It's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, we are. We do have a plan to do some education this fall. What uh, I know, we mentioned this grant, um, a two-year grant. Is that renewable? Is that is that a potential renewable? For the oh that you received from the Hard and Nuance project, so that was part of the Lose It to Win It campaign, and that's with the community funds that were raised. So we will not have another campaign like that to raise to put towards them. Okay, just curious. Yep. So we should take advantage of what we got at least in the interim. So I'm going to offer the resolution wave the reading to continue the phase one Cheryl um, routes and implement phase two. Second. We got a motion and a second to uh, approve phase two. Any more discussion? And I think just down the road, is, as some of the counselors mentioned, to look at you know what what fiscal impact will this be in year three and four when if we don't have any reimbursement. So mm -hmm. are there some other options? Are there some fundraising opportunities from the bicycler folks in town? And take a look I think at that. Maybe know what other communities are doing if they're doing sharrows throughout their community also. Or oh, there's a lot of metro count metro areas that are metro, all sheriffs. You know, yeah, I don't know. We're more we're rural. Uh, yep. It's a yep. A little bit. We have a motion and a second. Off the resolution. Waived reading. Any more discussion? Seeing none. Finance director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher. Yes. Councilor Mack. Yes. Councilor Schultz. Yes. Councilor Christian. Yes. President Schmitz. Yes. Motion carries. Item 4D, consider a request from William Swan on behalf of Milk Associ Associated Milk Producers Incorporated to amend the resolution number 0302 authorizing the vacation of the tea alley in block 20 north of Center Street. Ryan? Well, if you look at the information presented to you, you'll note that uh, <coughs> a vacation had been approved uh, earlier with conditions those uh, conditions were not completed therefore the vacation didn't go through I was contacted by uh, Mr. Swan uh, on behalf of AMPI asking if if and what they need to do in order to see that vacation through uh, that was passed along to the community development director and this is the results is that we would need to uh, amend resolution number 03-02 and uh, and then if the current owner of the property uh, completes all the or all the uh, uh, requirements, then the vacation will be concluded. 
I mean, the past councils have gone through all the work. I'll motion to offer a resolution, waive the reading to amend resolution number 03-02, authorizing the vacation of the T alley in Block 20 north of Center Street with the conditions. Second. We got a motion and a second to offer a resolution, waive the reading. Any more discussion? Seeing none, Finance Director, please call the roll. Councillor Fisher? Yes. Councillor Mack? Yes. Councillor Schultz? Yes. Councillor Christian? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes, motion carries. Item 4E, consider future use of the Putting Green facility. Tom Schmitz. Tom Schmitz, Park and Recreation Department. President Schmitz and Councillors, uh, we are looking for a little more uh, insight as to what your desire is for the future of the Putting Green site. Um, Putting Green Incorporated uh, desires uh, a new lease to operate the community garden. And according to the <coughs> present lease, um, the City Council has the authorization to require them to uh, uh, eliminate everything else, uh, everything on the site and, and restore it to conditions prior to their arrival. So you have a lot of information on the action form. And uh, <coughs> I know we have representatives here from Putting Green, if there's any questions specifically to them. I think the community guard is an asset, as we previously discussed. Any comments, concerns? I got a few. I was out there on Saturday, went out to the putting green, and I, I was a little bit saddened by that there was not very many lots or plots being act, being used out there. And maybe I'm wrong or not, but I only saw less than half. It looks like the ones that were actually had some something planted in them. Is that true? Am I, did I just not see that? Maybe it's a lot of potatoes that haven't came up yet. or um, <laughs> But it sure didn't look like there was a lot out there. I was kind of bummed. We are, too. I'm Tracy Vranish, Executive Director of Putting Green. Okay. So, yes, this year, for a variety of reasons, our um, number of gardeners has severely declined. And I, the gardeners, I have a relationship with most of the gardeners and I talk to them and I've heard different things. Some of them have purchased homes. So we were successful in that they garden there mm -hmm. and they like gardening and now they're gonna garden in their own yard. So th some of the part of the community garden is to garden there, but we also want people to have an easy place to start and learn. So that's some of it. Some people have moved away. Um, and I also believe some of it is because we've been in limbo and not knowing what's going on. There's a lot of confusion out there. It's like, is it putting green? Is it the city? Who should I contact? And that. So I think all of those things play in. And we typically have a very high retention rate. And um, that changed this year. And then some new people that had inquired or potential new people, they didn't follow through for whatever reason. And I think some of it is, if the city gets involved with this, there's marketing and education, just like you know everything that's new and different. We just need to get the word out there. And it's word of mouth and when people learn about it. Um, What's the size of the lots? They are 100 square feet and they are long and narrow, four feet wide by 25 feet long. Yeah. And how long have they been $40? The whole time. The whole time. Yep. That's the one thing I heard in the community the last couple of weeks, that people thought that was way too high, they would never pay that amount. If it was half that, they would. So we have a sliding scale for families in need. So that is just right off the top. Anybody that just says that they are in financial need, then they get it for $20. Okay. And we are, um, well, we researched it when we started the garden, you know, what do you charge? And we offer a lot of amenities or did that other community gardens don't. So we thought it warranted that fee. And I've actually heard the opposite where people will contact <coughs> me and I'll tell them $40. I'm like, is that per month? You know, they think this is a bargain okay. um, to be able to have that and have water and the tools and everything right there. Sure. Um, so it, and you can grow easily well over $40 worth of food on your plot. Sure. Okay. So, but that's good feedback to hear, mm -hmm. to know. Yeah, I, I, I was, the other thing that kind of amazed me, Evan, not being out there for quite a while, is that that's a lot of property out there. Um, and I'm like, we got a housing issue going on. And my brain started going in a little bit. I don't know what it's zoned out there, but I was just like, could part of that be looked at for housing? I don't know. I mean, I just, something to think about. 
The housing study I know is out, but I haven't even had a chance to look at it, so I just came out today. But um, I, I don't think I'm ready to decide any of this today. I just think we're, I was, uh, I just think this is a, a very important decision. It's an entrance to our community. I'd like to, people said it'd be nice to have a great looking park there as, uh, for children or a small putting green, uh, a different style of putting green for kids. Um, I've heard that it'd be a nice area for <coughs> um, a river entrance and something to do with our river. Um, so I just hope that we take our time and do this right, whatever that is. And I don't know if we're ready for that tonight. Mr. President, City Council members, I think <clears throat> we have to make one decision, and, and that is that uh, whether or not the putting green is going to have a lease for that space. I mean, we have to decide. So there's no confusion in the community, and putting green can either, you know, tell people they're up and running or whatever. Uh, the options or proposed actions that were put before you, um, you know, ordering putting green to remove everything, ordering putting green only to remove certain things, uh, leave the mini golf course intact, park and rec can just clean it up, leave the mini golf course intact, and park and rec will refurbish it entirely. I mean, mm -hmm. those were the options that we kind of came up with. Those, I think, at this point in time, uh, can be deferred, you know, to a point when you guys feel comfortable. Maybe you want to budget for it in 2018 for removal. Right. Maybe you want to budget for it for refurbishment. That's up to you. Uh, the lease... Uh, because it's now past June 1, they probably want to have a, have a lease so that they can operate. So that's one thing. Uh, and then whether or not you want to direct the uh, uh, park and rec director to work on the farmer's market thing. Is that a good site? I don't know. And so there's a couple things that probably could be initiated here and others that could be delayed until... You have more information. Right, right. And there was talk at the last meeting about your group wanting to do a not to be more of a friends of the park, and then there was the discussion about continuing the lease. Right. Correct. So we, after meeting um, with Mr. Schmitz out there and looking at the community garden. Putting Green felt it was in the best interest of Putting Green and our gardeners and the city if we did lease that parcel. And that way, we have the liability insurance on it, we have the maintenance, and we can keep it with the feel that is um, typical of a community garden. So if the city takes it on, um, some of the things we discussed, the wheelbarrows that we have, well, they're not commercial grade. And the fencing, you know, isn't that. And if you go any place else and you know, look at these community gardens that are sponsored by the city, there's one um, by where I live now, St. Paul Maplewood. It's very grassroots, and they have um, rusty wheelbarrows, and they have fencing. You know, that's just how community gardens operate. Right. And if we try to get it so sterile and so regulated, I think we're going to lose some of that. Yep. So that's why the Putting Green Board um, decided we would prefer to keep that under our responsibility and be able to um, continue the garden in that grassroots sort of way. A comment I want to bring out is I attended the Park and Rec Commission meeting when the, the Putting Green representatives were there. Uh, the Park and Rec, I mean, they were also in favor of let the Putting Green Incorporated continue to do that aspect of it, the community gardens. I mean, that we definitely have to have that tonight, correct? I mean, we should. Should. Mm -hmm. If we're going to lease it to them, the city attorney should draft it, get that done. I mean, I won't make that motion until we're done discussing everything else. I agree with that. I agree that um, that lease should be drawn up and that we should keep the community gardens. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Intact. Is there, you know, since we don't, we're already at, at probably mid, coming up on mid-June here, well, not a lot of planting time left. Can, with some publicity, could you still <laughs> get some of these plots filled? That's you could, but it is pretty late. late. And then it gets frustrating because then the frost comes and we don't like to have frustrated gardener so if you get going too late and we have so hard in new Ulm, 
put it on their Facebook page, I okay. think. And then Could you do half price now and get a few people in there? Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> what about It'd be a two for one deal. That's what I like to see. What if you got donated seeds and did some stuff for the food shelf? So we do still have the four food shelf plots. So that's a part of it, and that's been a part of it. And then we also encourage our gardeners. Some of them are very successful. And if they have excess produce, to also donate it to the food shelf. So when you think of the community garden and you think of the food shelf, we want people that visit the food shelf to have healthy produce. Yes. And people in New Ulm, it's pretty cool. If you ever go there on distribution day at the food shelf, a lot of people donate fresh produce yeah. and the people that visit really appreciate getting the tomatoes and potatoes and all of that and not all the canned and processed food so that's a good relationship that we are maintaining so can i put in a little plug for the farmers market part sure. is that appropriate um, so Farmer's Market, Heart of New Alm, worked on that when they first got going and had a lot of people come and speak to that. And I was one of the people I was involved with it because Putting Green at that time, we were doing a commercial garden. Farmer's Markets, you kind of want your Farmer's Market to be event and fun. You want families there. And so I can really imagine putting the farmer's market in that location. You're out in nature. And if you have mini golf and the families <coughs> come, there'll be a place for music. They could go down on the river. You've spoken to Jim Bartles, I believe, at K and UJ, and they would be open to that because they've been shuffling around and there's quite a bit of space out there that it would be a great use mm -hmm. of that property. So I hope that that can continue to be explored so if yes, we all I get a question are you in the last statement you made are you still considering running the putty green no no okay no, no just the community garden just the gardens yes. right that's what I thought we we're talking about yes, I guess sir. I, I like the idea of using it for just what you made a comment on but I think we need to make a decision to even though we don't like to but clean it up I'd like to see everything removed if it's all possible define everything <laughs> what do you mean so the, putting green, in other words. the mini golf course the mini golf course yes hey, Mr. President. because it's getting to be an eyesore in my opinion. but there are some things in there that they could use there's a b several buildings in there that well, I'm yes. sure the would want to use so it's like what part do we keep and what part do we get rid of and if we would decide, oh yeah, maybe we do want a miniature mini golf of a recreational sort. Well, there's some things there where they could use without tossing them. So that sounds like, oh, but yet I don't. I agree with you. I don't want it to overgrow, the, and it probably could be called Thistle Park, Park right now. That's about what's out there. But Roger, you were yep, sir, Mr. President. Yeah. Uh, I think as it's accurately represented on the agenda item, um, the lease provides that um, the nonprofit is obligated to remove those items unless the council decides otherwise right so and I think that's in this lease because so often when you have a third party wanting to use city land there's always a problem when they go and now we've got the expense of mm -hmm. dealing with it. right um, I think you, you raised legitimate concern about the appearance it is the main one of the main entryways to New Ulm it's starting to look pretty shabby um, so but that's your call on that as far as this lease is concerned, if you want to move forward with that tonight, as far as the community garden, I don't know what the duration would be. Um, one of the potential items talks about, um, you know, having the uh, the market in 2018 next year. Is this going to be a multi-year lease or just going to be an year? annual renewal lease? Yeah, potentially. Ask the putting we are. They, have they thought a one-year lease? Year or for the community garden part? Right. Yes, I mean, that's what we would like, a yearly thing. lease. And then if you aren't yeah. happy, the city isn't happy. And since we're, in, we're well into the planning season already, if the city did it 2017 and 18? Oh, I mean, sure. We had the right back go to the ahead the um, already to just keep it going for 2017. And I can't remember where that came from. I think that came from the city council meeting, um, the previous one, perhaps, that we could just... Um, so the community garden didn't have to stop because we were still in flux. My question would be, I understand if you want to just go for one year, but if it if it's going to run from June to June, I don't know that you want to get into a situation where gardeners have paid rent and somehow it's oh, not yeah. going to be renewed yeah, yeah. in 2018. No, no, that's what I meant. Do it for the remainder of 2017 and the entire 2018. 
Well, so whatever. Right. Right. Calendar. You're talking about calendar, calendar year. We're running the calendar, calendar year, January, January to January, because right. yeah. we typically don't even look for gardeners until, well, until it starts to warm up a little bit. Nobody when it's snowing too much. And if they know that, I mean, the point is valid. If they know that their garden is going to be there, then they start planting their seeds in their house, you know, and dreaming and mm -hmm. all the things that we like about gardening. So if we knew... I believe by January 1st, people would be able to plan. Is your group committed enough to do, say, a five-year plan, as long as it's annually re renewable? I mean, just to save paperwork every year? I mean, you still have an out. You always I have know. I know. I believe that, so. Does it make more sense, Roger, or no? You did I don't know if it really matters. It doesn't really make a lot of difference? Three years? I, in my opinion, I'd, I'd great make the motion to do this. The remainder of 2017, January 1st, December 31st, 2018. I just don't want to okay, with the city council, we change our mind. Like, Les Schultz wanted to build an apartment there. Wait a minute, we got to lease yeah. gardens. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't have done that. Yeah. We, can cover, we can cover our tracks through the whole <laughs> 2018 and revisit it January 1, 2019. That, that's my take. I'm good with that. I'm just mm -hmm. trying to say paperwork. But right. The we really have market. two decisions. Though. The farmer's market item will be a separate item that that uh, mm -hmm. Tom Schmidt's Park and Rec Director will bring to the City Council. Okay. With that being said, just to get one item off the agenda, I mean it is a separate one, I'm going to direct uh, move to direct the City Attorney to draft a lease agreement authorizing Putty Green Incorporated to continue operating and maintaining the community garden under the Park and Recreation Department and authorize the City Manager to sign the lease for the remainder of the 2017 year and then January 1, 2018 to December 31st, 2018. I'll second that. We got a motion and a second. Any more discussion on that? The only question I have is what I heard in Putting Green say is that they're going to be a separate entity. You're going to have your own liability insurance. You're going to do everything on your own. And you're not necessarily going to be under park and rec. That's the way we envision way it back envision to it. that, that whole wheelbarrow yep, deal if yep. we are under them. And we are still an entity. So Putting Green, yes, Putting right. Green Inc. 501c3, we continue to exist. So we would sign the lease but at and the then last, we would have the liability At the last insurance. meeting, I remember somebody saying, uh, we don't want to, the liability insurance, we want to be underneath the city. The motion was prepared to be under the city. So if you want to strike under the Park and Rec Department. Okay. I'll then, amend that, excluding the Park and Rec entity. Department and strictly the Putting Green Incorporated. Yep, that's fine. That's just the Putting Green leasing land from the city and the Park and Rec doesn't have any uh, interest in, in it other than supporting it morally. Correct, for the garden itself. Great. Did you get that? Okay. Any more discussion? Everybody understand that one? All right. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Okay, back to Roger. What about, what are we going to do as far as, the, since it's coming back, did it, we're going to require them to clean up? That's, the lease says that they're obligated to do it unless the city decides to handle it differently, meaning city bears part of all the costs. So we don't have to do nothing? We it, if at some point the city believes that it's becoming unsightly, it's not being maintained, or you want things down, they would have to be notified of their obligation to do that. But they don't have a lease anymore. No, but they've got a lease that requires them to remove their property. Right. At the end of that lease. They've terminated the lease, and it says that get your stuff out of there so that we can use it the way we want to. But I understand that there may be part or all of it that the city wants to know. keep. And at some point, um, if it's not maintained, either we're going to be paying city employees to maintain it with everything that's there for all those structures. I don't want to go not. there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that, that's what I'm trying to avoid. Yeah. I think the longer, the longer you wait to clean it up, Probably. the greater the potential for putting green to disappear. Mm -hmm. Right. And any resources they currently have at this point in time will be gone. Right. That's, what that's I, a very valid point. Uh -huh. That's what I was going to ask is how long do we have to make that decision until they're not obligated anymore to, to right. do it? Well, there really isn't a time limit on it, but I think Brian's right. got the most realistic point, yeah. which is if there's nobody there, this is a corporation. 
-hmm. And if there's nobody actively mm -hmm. willing to do what the corporation is supposed to do, it falls back on us by default. Mm -hmm. And then by doing so, we're liable if it falls in more disrepair and somebody gets hurt on the property. Sure, or if you start having people vandalizing it or, you know, whatever, misusing the property. So, One question I do have for the Park and Rec Director, Tom, the first, uh, under the budget and fiscal issues, you know, we've got one local estimate for complete demolition, removal and restoration of the mini golf course ranges from forty to 55000 Okay. We did not get a, a a bid just to demo it. I don't see that on here. It says restoration of the mini golf course. Restoration was included with a demo bid. So we didn't get just a bid to flatten it out. Uh, President Schmidt's counselors, Councillor Christian, my understanding is that the lower uh, cost bid was basically just to remove the structures above ground, leaving the uh, concrete foundations for the golf course. And the higher bid was okay. to pull out the concrete foundations and restore with black dirt and, and seed. Okay. Now, I'd like to also point out a few other components to think about here. We've got the mini golf course itself. We have the vegetation out there as a second item. The clubhouse and the ge geodesic dome. Having reviewed the site a number of times, I see no use for the clubhouse or the geodesic dome. And I think there may be an opportunity to uh, modify the landscaping or uh, do a little bit of trimming, so to speak, and pruning to further expose the mini golf course for you to make a decision whether or not you want to um, have that mini golf course maintained or eliminated. So a few more things I'd like to point out. I might recommend that that at this point maybe you uh, direct Putting Green Incorporated to remove the clubhouse, the dome, and uh, maybe someone work on the, the landscaping and the vegetation. To, to well, I, Mr. President, I don't yeah. know if, you know, I don't know if Putting Green is prepared to do that, do anything to remove this. I think you'd probably get some, if they're going to hire this out, you get some mobilization expenses if they're going to do it piecemeal to take out the shed and the dome. Or try and sell it. And, and then, you know, leave other stuff, and then are they going to be obligated to come back and remove the uh, golf course if we don't want that? You know, it, I can see reasons why either remove it, clean it up, or not, if you want to keep all your options open. Well, what I'm reading here is we're assuming we're getting hung with it, and I don't <laughs> like that idea. <laughs> well, that's why I ask. I don't know what they're prepared to do, if anything. Right. Maybe we should find out. So at this point, we've been waiting, kind of holding back, and we will be selling the things that the city has indicated they're not interested in. So the dome, the clubhouse, we have other items out there, and we plan on having an auction and sell the things that, like we have a refrigerator and just a wide variety of things that we won't we will no longer use. So we will be raising some funds that way. <coughs> um, we don't have, I mean, I'll just, maybe this will help. We don't have the funds. We don't have forty to $50,000 to do the demolition even as directed, if that's the way it goes. But and I, oh, so the other thing when you talk about, so again, Demolition. So we can picture the mini golf course, right, and the cement and that. But there are also things out there that could be utilized for a uh, park or the farmer's market. So we have lighting. So there's lighting in the parking lot. There's the parking lot. And so when you say return it to the state that it was in or, you know, remove, well, okay, we're not obviously going to remove the, all the black dirt and that we put in, the storm ponds that are have been installed at Putting Green's expense to clean the water before it goes into the river. Um, the parking lot itself, I'm imagining you would want to keep that parking lot. I know the wastewater treatment plant is interested in that. And getting that infrastructure and that base for that parking lot was very expensive. So there are things out there and bringing in all the black dirt and recontouring and getting the drainage right so it's going not directly into the river, it's going into those storm ponds. You're getting an improved piece of property compared to what it was in 2003, 2004 Absolutely. when it was a construction site. So that's something else to consider. 
and the lighting. If you decide to go into the farmer's market or something, those things could be utilized. So you really, I can't imagine, would want to say, you know, take everything out without understanding what the future could be. So your auction would then include potentially doing everything at the putting green too and selling all the different displays and... Mm -hmm. We've already had a couple of that. people out there that are interested in some of the things that are easy to remove, some of the things crazy enough that aren't that easy to remove. We've got an interest right. in. So you don't know yeah, you until don't. you get the word out. So we thought the easiest thing would be just to do an auction, get the word out that these things will be available and let people be creative. One of um, the public school, they are doing an outdoor environmental play area and they're interested in some of the items because they think it would enhance the school's campus. So potentially at the end of the day, the only thing that would be left would be some of those underground cement structures, yeah. right? Right, basically. they're the above ground, right? They're cement pads basically with right, right. curb. Well, and what, Mr. Brother? Yes. Well, Ms. Vanish, I'm still not sure what the answer is from the organization. If the council directed that anything was to be removed, I don't know if your answer is just no, we're not going to do it? Or, I mean, if you're going to get paid for some of this stuff, you know, looking out for the taxpayers in New Orleans, yes, yes, did you use some of the money definitely. that you're going to get so paid? That was, so that was what our board, that's been the decision. We would use the funds that we raise for the demolition, and we would do as much as we could until the money ran out. Okay, so I just didn't know. Yeah, right. sorry. Makes sense to me. Though. So could we set up a... A little committee to work with Mr. Schmitz and until something gets done. So we got. That's kind of where I was going. Huh? That's what I was thinking too. Yeah. So we got a couple from the city council on it and kind of spearhead the thing to see where we're going to end up. I think it makes sense just to kind of move it forward and keep going. And we don't want to wait till October, September when it's all overgrown and ten feet high. And I like the idea of the farmers market thing out there in the future and things like that. Yep. The comment you made about building, I don't think you could ever build on there. There's a few of us know, know what the ground was like underneath, and it'll never happen. So <laughs> I just threw it out to there. be used for some public purpose, I think. Sure. I'd be willing to sit on that committee if we want to officially offer a motion to form a uh, task force. To mm -hmm. be the correct term, I can would I assume. Ask oh. a, can I ask a you question? You want to serve on a two man? No, I just okay. want to ask a question. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> um, Chair of the committee. And I'm going to ask our city attorney this question. Mm -hmm. What Stacy just said about what they sell, they would be able to put that towards the value of demolition. Is a possibility that the new lease could state that, and then with leaving the city with what's left, because I don't want to put anybody in. We could incorporate whatever additional terms you want to, and as long as we're going to have an agreement with them uh, relating to the you know areas that's, that's being used as a community garden, I mean, this is an issue that's just kind of hanging out there. Um, if that much can be understood, we can incorporate that, but it sounds like the task force would then be working on deciding what particular buildings are staying or going. Mm -hmm. And I understand it might take some time until you've liquidated and gotten paid for whatever you would be selling as well. It's not like it's one item and you got a buyer that's going to close next week. So, you know. My question for the putting green, if council goes this route where, okay, putting green is going to liquidate all their assets, sell them off the property, what kind of time frame are you looking to organize that? Well, we were reading the lease that said that we had 90 right. days, so we were thinking we needed to get it done by September oh. 1st, um, if you look at that. And so we were going to do it this summer, but we wanted to make sure that we weren't getting rid of things that the city felt could be useful. And my question to the city attorney is, um, you're all right with that? The, we're going to take it right down to the 90-day that they have to clear the site? Well, if they've got 90 days, they've got 90 right. days. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's a valid point. I mean, initially we were just talking about extending the lease for the community garden. Mm -hmm. We do have these other issues Yes. on the golf course. And this way, I appreciate what Ms. Ranich is telling us tonight. If we put it in writing, it would help to mis eliminate any misunderstandings mm -hmm. down the road. So the That's mayor raises make, a valid make point. Make sure we have everything to the both, extent both we can. entities understand. That's right. mandatory. So we're looking at the September 1, the 90-day <laughs> deadline, and this special committee task force, uh, whatever, 
Was there a timeline there? Like, I'm not going to give them until September 1st? I mean, next council meeting you'll have it back to us? Potentially. Um, I, don't, I don't know if there's that. I guess some I'll do I complicated Roger. I mean, a lot of it has been discussed with the Park and Rec Commission already and yep. the Park and Rec Board. Or maybe if Tom wants to make a comment, how much time do you think you need? President and counselors, I think the real decision is the golf course itself. Um, the yep. clubhouse is portable. The dome is portable. The vegetation can be changed in a matter of days or you know, pruned or eliminated. Mm -hmm. I think the question is the golf course. Um, Again, though, if we say you'll have it back to us by the next council meeting, is two weeks enough time? Yes. I think so, too. So if you're already on the Park and Rec, do you want to serve on that committee? I think the board. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll volunteer, but I'm just like you're already on the... I don't, I don't have a problem. Are you with and that. Bo both of us? If you we should probably have two. <coughs> I, I can go along. I'm already on the park or rec board. Do you want to be on it? No, that's fine. That works. Well, that's I'm trying today. to figure out how to make the motion to put that all into words. <laughs> <laughs> like well, we said. Well, why why you're thinking of that? Um, <laughs> I just have had comments of people from people saying that they don't really want us to see us take on another park or another of the golf green course I, I guess um, I'd kind of like to weigh in that I would like to see it removed um, just because I think we've had quite a few parks that we're trying to maintain now and this wasn't in our park plan and right. um, I just think that we we have enough to keep up with at this point that taking on another park I like the idea of the farmers market if they can get that moved out there but I don't know if we need to supply a park with that I okay, so I'm, I'll, I'll take a stab at putting it all in. in <laughs> I'm going to move that the city attorney draft, oh, that one we did already, the lease agreement, the city attorney draft some type of letter to the Putting Green Incorporated that they will incorporate all their assets no later than September 1st. And do we want in there that the remainder balance, if they can't get it done, is forwarded to the city? And he, uh, let's, let's say they come up with 5000 does that go to the city, or can we do that if it's not enough to take care of it? If they That's well, it's whatever they're going to agree to. Um, if if they agree, first off, my understanding is that they will be selling items that are movable, so they're not totally restoring this property back to the condition that it was. Right. One of the things, or some of the things that Ms. Vanich raises, which are valid points, is when you look at all of the improvements. Um, do you want the lighting to go? Do you want the gravel and the driveway to get plowed under? If you want to leave that intact, I think they need to know what they're supposed to do. Right. Well, that's what I think the that's committee should I really mean, sit down and discuss. And see, and I, and I can't benefit us and what maybe, the, maybe what we should do is two motions instead. Yeah, maybe what Good. we should do is I mean, it would be nice to incorporate this into the community garden agreement, but that needs to get put into place. Okay. Um, maybe we need to have a second agreement then that's going to deal with the putting green and the golf course. Okay. Yeah. Because I mm -hmm. just that if if we're not so going to know until the next meeting, uh, we should get the first one done. Okay. Now. So we leave the motion alone. That one's already been voted on. Yep. Yep. So maybe we just need a motion to create a task force to address um, putting green concerns. And then we get have it back on the agenda. And submit recommendations back right. to the council. Well, no one's actually made one yet. I think we should make a motion. That? I think a motion should be made to number one grant the. Putting That's done. Green. That's done. We're That's, done already? That's done and voted on. All right. I did that. Did miss that one. So should we just keep it simple? That a motion to create the subcommittee of Les Schultz and myself with the Park and Rec director and report back to the council in two weeks. Next council meeting. Excuse me. Um, Never. Even uh, it don't have to. Rush Roger it. being on that committee, maybe. Roger, do you want to be in on? Should you be in on that? Well, I'm going to need to be either I or Tom Borgen. You're going to need to be probably I think so. getting the information. Otherwise, otherwise yeah. yeah, it gets to be difficult. Okay. To, to Along with the city attorney or the assistant city attorney. I'll second that. Just we got a motion on the second as discussed. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody figures it out. Any more discussion? I guess we're creating a committee. Anyway. <laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Item 4F, consider a motion to receive a notice of the government, Governor Dayton. 
has signed the ominous bill or tax bill containing authorization for the city of New Ulm to expand the local government option sales tax authority with a 14.8 million debt cap. Brian. Yeah, there was question on the last day of uh, the legislative session whether or not the governor would sign. There was some political jockeying that went on. And uh, by the end of the final day, the governor uh, decided not to, uh, I don't know, play chicken with the legislature at this point in time. And he just signed it uh, late in the, early in the evening or late in the day. Uh, so that, uh, <coughs> that bill was passed and uh, the city's uh, local option sales tax expansion authority was included in that and at this point in time uh, the discussion about where where we go from here because i mean we've held off on deciding whether or not we start projects in 2020 or 2021 or 2018 and uh, i had a conversation with council president schmitz and we said well why don't we get it on the agenda and uh, start that conversation and see if you know how long it's going to take before we come to a conclusion on what our next step is. So what you have before you basically is the um, notification that uh, that our local option sales tax uh, has been expanded, uh, and the difference between reauthorized and expanded. Uh, if you'll notice, North Main Cato's was reauthorized, and that, that's because their last sales tax was $9 million, and their new sales tax is $9 million. Ours was $9 million, and now it's 14.8, so that's an expanded sales tax authorization. That's the difference between three or four of the different sales tax uh, uh, laws that were in that bill. Uh, <clears throat> It just basically boils down to when do you want to start the new projects that were identified through the renew process. Um, one of the uh, you know uh, things that most other communities did not have in their sales tax uh, legislation back in 1999 was that any money uh, collected in excess of the sales tax debt service could be put into a fund so it could replace roofs. Uh, parking lots, anything that was built or purchased with the original project. So we can't do anything outside of that realm. So, And we've been using that money to replace compressors that have gone bad, mostly big, big ticket items. Um, or do you want to forego the last three years of that fund, which is about $2 million, maybe $2.5 million, and, and pay off that uh, debt and start the renew projects the, the, that we had just gone through and identified in the, in the legislation and get them going in 2018, 2019, or 2020, or whenever you want to start those. You can phase those in. You can kind of do whatever you want. Um, but I don't believe what you can do is take the uh, expansion sales tax revenue to pay the old debt. You know, you can't keep the old debt and collect that money to pay the old debt. You have to have the new debt and pay that money to the new debt. So there's no crossing over that. So it's either extend it out to 2020 or cut it short. And uh, the uh, Nicole here in... in uh, in finance, put together, you know, just a little spreadsheet. We can just kind of take <coughs> a look at that if you would. And <clears throat> that pretty well kind of just tells you <clears throat> with not a lot of certainty because we don't know if we're going to need to do the roof on a specific year or if we, or if we have to, uh, you know, you still know the life of many of these things. But on the left-hand side, You'll see it's titled if bonds are called 12 1 2017. And the right hand side is if original tax continues until 2020. On the left hand column, you'll see we have a current balance of $4.2 million. We've got some things uh, that are ordered and, and going to use some of that funds. You've got the revenue stream coming in. 
So on December 1st of 2017, you still end up with about $4.27 uh, million. Uh, if you were to pay the debt on December 1st, which is $2,030,000, uh, you got some revenue on interest, uh, sales tax receipts, and sales uh, tax received in 28. Uh, you end up with about two and a half million dollars in your fund. Then, if you look at 2018, 19, and 20, we plan to do the Civic Center roof, which is estimated to be about eight hundred thousand dollars, which gets the fund down to one point eight million dollars. It's not going to grow anymore, except from minor interest if it sits there. Uh, the Civic Center roof is by far the biggest one. But the community center roof on the new section was also brand new, and that's going to need replacing, you know, or in, you know, 20, 21, 22 years still also. And the field house roof, if I'm not mistaken, was, was new also. So if you take those two things out, you end up in the hole about $878,000. If you continue to 2020 and those things happen, so apples and apples, uh, you collect all the revenue through the year 2020, uh, December of 2020, by the end of 2020, and you add in those other projects, which the ice refrigeration system is by far the largest item, $1.7 million. And I don't know how long that's going to last. I just don't know. Uh, maybe it lasts 40 years. I just don't have a clue. Uh, the remaining balance is $2.4 million, just under $2.4 million, which then can be kept in that fund for 5, 10, 15 years to pay for more compressors and all the other stuff that uh, might go wrong in the next 5, 10, 15 years. Once that fund is depleted, it's on the tax roll. And I, you know, everybody understands that. So the difference between the two choices is you run out of the you run out of your fund money, uh, you know, potentially 2020 to 2024, you know, potentially, I don't know. Uh, it's an assumption. Or you run, uh, you run out of it in 20 years, from, you know, 20 years from now, depending on what happens. I don't know. So those are, those are, the, are the two uh, ends of the spectrum that you have before you. Uh, you know, it always comes back to money, no matter what decision, you know, the council makes here, whether it's uh, Sharrow's at $20,000 a year to repaint or or this particular fund or when you start the new uh, renew projects, it boils down to what's the impact on, on the taxpayer. And one process impacts the taxpayer sooner than the other. And uh, the choice is up to the city council what they want to do. But I think that conversation needs to start and so we get a better understanding of what the you know what the reality is of what we're attempting to do, because I think Park and Rec has gone on, uh, the Park and Rec Commission has gone on record as wanting to initiate the projects in 2018 as soon as possible. Uh, we're just pointing out that that's great, but there are financial implications to doing that, and we've had this discussion with Renew you know uh, two years ago, of of what the impacts of this could be, but now we have the decision. We, the, the authorization is there, and it's up to the city council when they want to initiate this, whether it's 2018 or 2019, that's close enough, or do you want to go to the final year 2020? So you have uh, on your issue sheet all the information uh, that kind of recaps what we've gone over. You know, it's a general review of the information, and it's here to kind of start the conversation. Am I also correct, Brian, that one of the reasons we went this year to the legislature with the renewal process is because of the fact that maybe it wouldn't have passed or wouldn't have gotten signed, so we had another year or two before That's we correct. ran out? It almost didn't <laughs> pass this time, um, but uh, if we didn't get it this year, we'd have time. 2018, 2019, and then after 2020, you know. It'd be brand new. You'd have to start all over, I think. But, uh, 
Yeah, that was the point. You just never knew what the legislature was going to do, so you try to get in as soon as you possibly can, just in case, like last year, they didn't pass any yeah. omnibus tax bill. So, uh, what's well, so one of the advantages too, that by approving getting it approved now, we don't end up with a one-year gap. If we'd have went to 2020, then we'd have actually right. had to go to 2021. Yeah. So that was another reason we put it in there. I guess where I'm coming from is we, we actually would have had a whole year to to not collect taxes, mm -hmm. and we'd had to start all over again with the with the extension pro or not extension to be a brand new sales tax. So yeah, that's correct. That's the reason we did it early. Mm -hmm. I guess just to, where I'm leaning from is I really don't want to burden the taxpayers in the years to come with any surprise. So I mean, I know it's important to try to get things going, but. I made the comment earlier on to uh, ending it, let's put it this way, too soon, I will not be in favor of. I just cannot see initial, or, you know, down the road dumping it on the taxpayer. I'm, I'm going to piggyback on the president's comment. I'm all for the Renew Project. I know Park and Road wants to be going, but in a nutshell, you know, the end of 2017, if we do have our repairs being negative three quarter million, you take it to the two. 212 and 20, no impact really on the taxpayer, and a $2.3 million remaining balance. <clears throat> Are we making that decision this evening or no, not? I, don't, I think we need to <laughs> discuss oh. it. Yeah. Somewhere along the line, we'll end up making a decision, but that's why I asked that Brian and I talked about it. Let's just put something on. Let's get some talking going. Yeah. We won't have to make a decision. I'm just stating where I'm at. You're stating where you're at. Now we got somebody else going to state where he's at. <laughs> Go ahead. Mr. President and Counselors, Bob Skillings, I was part of the Renew Committee. I have a question uh, I see on, on this worksheet that you handed out. It says if bonds called December 1st, 2017, could we call the bonds December 1st, 2018? Yes, but that, you, we, then there'd be more interest to pay on it. It's just a matter of what interest you're going to pay at what point. But the but the long-term impact on the on the um, tax, the property taxpayer might be less yes. if we wait. Yes. And and with that, with that year, could we do some of the pre-planning that needs to happen with projects before we issue bonds? The pre-planning expenses have to be, I believe, within night, you know, within ninety days of the bond issue, isn't it? Was it 90 days? We had that Maybe conversation. 60. 60 days. So, you know, the, the answer to that well, is if 60 you... 60 days of the date that you make that resolution. Right. So we could make the resolution in April and it would go back to... Okay. January's expenses. Or not January. The two months. <laughs> two, two months. months back. All right. Got it. So we'd have to adopt that resolution that we've, you know, done, I think, every year for the, for the, um, for the street, street projects when we do that bonding. So we go back and capture expenses. One comment I do want to bring up at, at one of the park and rec meetings, I had asked President or uh, the park and rec director Tom Schmitz if he had any funding available in their budget to do whatever he had to do if they wanted to start the project. You know that the plan specification design, which has no impact on the tax bill, and I he may come up now and comment on that. I mean, if we went out to 2018, if he had any money in his budget. Would that impact anything? Yeah, then you couldn't pay yourself back unless you do that uh, resolution. No, I mean, using Park and Rec funny, budgeted it's kind of this where I was, year. Where I was going, yeah. Right. Yeah. President Schmitz and counselors, that would be a decision uh, for you to make. Um, the planning and design expenses for these projects can be funded by sales tax monies, uh, sales I mean, tax revenue. And if you want planning and architectural services and so on to begin prior to use, you know, being eligible for sales tax expenses, that would be <coughs> park and rec fund expenses. Mm -hmm. And again, your decision to make at any future budget year. But Mr. President, as I hear yes. this, you can't use the funds from park and rec now and expect that you're going to be reimbursing oh, those a year right. and a half or two years from now. No. Oh, I understand so that. Money's I mean, but, gone. But if we, yeah. What I'm getting at is if the Park and Rec Commission decides we're not going to fix Harmon Park this year, we're going to change our mind, that budget money is going to go to the plans and specs for whatever is prioritized. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm getting at. Johnson, or Johnson Park. Let's say you choose to 
the Park and Rec Commission decides, no, we want to move forward, plans and specs for the Johnson Park. But this year's budgeted money is used, whatever jockeying he does or council permits him to do, to start their process and not touching the sales tax issue. Well, you're, you're saying take it, that project would then be taken out of the the, the city, tax. no, no. You, that you, project, okay. the, you would just do the preliminary. Sorry, and the preliminary. The if, you'd never get if, reimbursed if, for it. So. Right. If Park and Rec decides we're going to spend 55000 this year to get those plans and specs started for the Johnson Park I'm going to use, that's coming out of their budget this year. No, it will not be reimbursed. I understand it. But if they wanted to get their ball rolling, not lose an entire year, and I understand where they're at with the tournaments and whatnot yeah. coming up at Johnson yeah. Park. It certainly is possible, but it's a city council decision, mm -hmm. not a park and rec commission decision. So what you're saying then, Dave, and on the other hand, though, is it, we would still have to end it soon. Oh, you're buying almost a year, yeah. another year of sales tax collecting. But that's not really going to put us in a good financial state standing yet. I like the idea of having the $2.4 million at the end in reserves. Anybody else? <laughs> <laughs> well, right now, is I think we should talk about it a little bit and table it a little bit and but that's what know where we're at in a year yet mm -hmm. and then bringing it back. You know, I served on the committee. We worked pretty hard on this and we were pushing for it. We were also looking that we could get lower interest rates if we started the construction process earlier and, and keep the costs, but... Uh, I like the idea about entertaining to start putting requests for proposals or designs out there because we don't know what. And prioritizing have, and, and put up construction projects are not going to go down where in we're price. At, but, but we're not going to. We're probably going to be doing this in more than one bill, or you know, oh, yeah. one, more than one bonding. I mean, if we could stagger it, but the biggest thing is when we're going to end it. And can we break this up, Brad? We'll have so to break yeah, it up. We'll have to. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't have to, but <laughs> if you, anytime you spend more than $10 million on a bond issue or you receive $10, $10 million or more, uh, they need to be bank qualified. And bank qualified, according to the you know federal laws, basically means only the big banks can bid on these things and when you go from a pool of 30 potential bidders down to four they know that and their interest rates are higher and so if if we with our three <coughs> three point two million dollars with our normal street uh bonding plus maybe the utilities might do two million dollars for something that's five and so if you want to stay under the 10 you could do a five one year and a five the next year and eight the next year. I mean, you can you can cut this up into all different pieces if you want to. That's not a problem. Uh, you would just schedule your, your projects to be that way. It's just... But you you're going to collect this, the sales tax revenue the same every year, even if you just bond for four million out of the 14. Correct. Correct. You're going to collect, just like we did the first uh, uh, <coughs> sales tax, we, we're going to put that into a, a, now a special account and any money left over after you pay the debt service sits there, okay? And as you accumulate your projects over, let's say you do it over five years, you build all your projects out that you got all the revenue here, but your expenses in, in year 20 are going to be higher because you delayed some projects to year five. And so now you've got this money that you can then pay off that higher debt in those later years. So it, financially, it works out. It's not a problem. So if we want to do ten million or under and phase in the projects, that that's working. <coughs> that's not a problem. But that still affects our bottom line because we ended it. So yeah, we, we can't, yeah. Whatever you do, you have to end the current the one yeah. before you can do the next one. Mm -hmm. And that's before construction starts on the new one. Mm -hmm. It's not because uh, well, sixty days. before you before sell the bond. Before you sell, mm -hmm. before you sell the bond. I mean, you could pay it off and sell the bond on the same day, but the point is, well, you got to pay the one off before you can sell the other one. 
Well, we could get a jump start if we took park and rec money and did the preliminary designs and review and put our priorities in place and then I think we need to talk about that and what what is the first priority and then what the design fees are to put those dollars in place and then I know we got a couple things time sensitive that we're talking about in the community also too so and I just want to clarify I, I, I probably I jump ahead because I already know the answer on some of these things but the reason the reason when you pay off the old debt and you can create the new debt isn't necessarily because you can't have the old debt sitting out there if we want to use taxes to pay that off I, I don't know there's any big problem the problem is you're using the same revenue stream to pay both debts and you can't do that it's not going to work so the the issue is is since you you only have one revenue stream you have to pay the one off before you can start paying the other one off so that's why you have to pay it off you can't spend money twice i learned that once <laughs> <laughs> doesn't work so um we don't have an analysis if we held off to um, paying it off in 2018. Well, you do because the, 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 the 1231 2018 balance is there. Yeah. You would just yeah. have to take off oh. those future pro on this side, on the right, uh, right hand side. On the right hand side. It breaks it yeah. down when you go farther. The end of 2018, oh. the end of 2019. This would be a negative, and that'd be mm -hmm. a positive. Yeah. So this is really the probably the worst case scenario and the best case scenario, uh, and then anything in between, that mm -hmm. whatever the council wants to do. Mr. President, yes. council members, in speaking with some of my uh, fellow Renew members, uh, you know we spent pretty much a year uh, meeting at least twice a month, spending many hours uh, debating the projects and reviewing the projects and strategizing on how we best could come up with uh, community assets that benefit our community and the region. Um, in speaking with some of those members recently, uh, it would be our hope that we could be have some input into your decisions uh, coming forward here in the next you know month or so. Um, and so maybe having a work session together or something like that would be I guess our request but the comment on what the mayor made the comment <laughs> you know I know all the work that was put into it and I appreciate all the work that was put into it but the bottom line is is when this work was all put into it the idea was is to get it try to get it passed whether it's this year next year or the following year we never once said, and I brought it up at those meetings we had prior to this, that I was not in support of ending it soon. And we said, well, that decision doesn't have to be made because we just want to get it passed. Well, now we got it passed, and now we're, we're back to the same thing. Let's end it, you know, and I guess. Mr. President, and, and I don't know if the committee would say, let's end it right now. I, I you know, it does. When you look at the numbers, that's maybe not the best decision. Mm -hmm. But I, but the in between might be a better decision. And you factor in higher interest rates, you factor in inflation on projects, you know, you factor in some of those things, and maybe it is, it would be better to to start in 2018 or 19 instead of waiting until 2020. We don't know. Okay. As long as I had my mouth going earlier, I really do believe that members, or at least some members of the Renew Commission or committee, should be involved in the, in mm -hmm. maybe not necessarily in the decision, because <coughs> I suppose that has to be council. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> making a rec a strong recommendation one way or the other to the council members. So I think Renew should be part of it. Uh, I don't think I officially ever th said thank you to all the hours and hours that were spent by the Renew Committee. So, yeah, they should be involved. 
It could be a work session or, work or a session. public hearing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Could be either one. And I think we should have the finance director there too, you know, looking at the numbers. And uh, I would anticipate that would bring uh, uh, public finance in because mm -hmm. they did some preliminary analysis on the financial side of it. Now that we're getting more serious about it, we need to. Mm -hmm. And they could answer more of those questions about the limitations yes. as far as reimbursement mm -hmm. right. yeah. than, right. than I'm knowledgeable of. Yeah. And I guess, you know, even when we're talking about that, you know, I'd like to know that if we did end it early and, you know, we're looking at the numbers, you know, because when we're always budgeting, you know, how much taxes are going to go up and stuff like that, we could look at that and see if we ended it early, you know, we're looking at a 2% or 5% increase, you know, to make up that differences, you know, just there's numbers involved. And, Without yeah, having them in front we of may us. we may even bring up some questions that need to be addressed by the by their bond council. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't mm -hmm. know what yeah. those, that question might be yeah. right now, but we I know uh, city attorney and I have had discussions with our bond council already on mm -hmm. the finer details of bonding and what you can and can't do. So, okay, but, but I appreciate the time that you've taken. You know, you put out the roof, the ice refrigeration system, you know, things of that, the big ticket items, you know, I think we should take a hard double look again to make sure we've got our bases covered there too. For the right, and we've been utilizing just the big ticket items. We don't, we don't use the renew, not the renew, but the sales tax money for a doorknob or, you know, $50 item. We don't do that. It's just the really big stuff, operational stuff. Yeah, a door got doorknob got broke that's mm -hmm. part of operations mm -hmm. it's just the big stuff mm -hmm. well I, th I think the object of putting on the agenda tonight served its purpose to get some talk going and we've done it so we aren't going to be making any re decisions tonight anyway so we can actually if everybody's satisfied move on do we want a decision of having a public meeting at some point or a work session do we want that decision made tonight on this particular topic or would you prefer to add it to it? We could make it an agenda item in the future. Could make it, yeah. Do you have an idea when that timeline might be, Mr. Chair? Or a recommendation of when we'd want to do that? July, August? I'm thinking budget time, for sure. I mean, yeah. this is a budget issue, potentially. Yeah, we just started the 2018 budgeting process, too. So, you know, right. another month or month and a half into it, we will know more definitely where Park and Rec's budget sits or where their right. balance okay. is, is actually at. But I think this might take one, maybe two meetings for the renewal committee to meet and uh, we have to allow yeah, they might time to pull together finance involved. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So put Thanks. it off to August, August, August. August. meeting in August maybe, potentially mm -hmm. right in that area. Okay. August would be good because it would give, if there's any implement. Anything that impacts the 2018 budget, Correct. there would still be time to put it back. Okay. In yes. The preliminary. Okay. Like, so. You want to do the, uh, like, the after the second? We don't have a motion, so I'm going to offer a motion to. First part of August is kind of cluttered with activities. Let's go to There's something August. going on there. Yeah, I was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Sturgis. That's right. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Maybe the second meeting in Sturgis August. Sturgis rally. <laughs> well, the president can call a special meeting if you think we sure. need to. Yeah. Or we could meet in Sturgis. If we can meet in Sturgis. <laughs> <laughs> you, you shut right, Larry? Did you shut <laughs> the mic off before you sit there? So I'm going to offer a motion to um, accept the report. Second. We've got a motion and a second to accept the report. Any more discussion? Seeing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item 5A. Consider the following actions associated with the submittal of the housing tax credit application <coughs> to the Minnesota Housing Finance Agency by the Community Housing Development Corporation for the construction of a 55-unit affordable housing in the former New Orleans Middle School building located at 15 North State Street. Resolution expressing the intent to establish the administrative of the housing tax increment financing district resolution adopting the housing needs initiative action plan preparing by uh, prepared by the housing initiative needs housing needs initiative for the Hou city of new Orleans. resolution authorizing the submittal of a letter of support for the project mr grammons mr president city councilors we have representatives <coughs> of the uh 
uh, Community Housing Development Corporation here, uh, Heidi Rothman and Elizabeth uh, Flannery, is that correct? And uh, I believe they're uh, wanting to, or willing to, uh, do an overview of their project so that it can be a good reminder of uh, what they're proposing to do and what the final project will look like. Great. Uh, Mr. President, Council Members, thank you. I, we'd really like to thank you for considering our request this evening um, and for having us here tonight to speak to it. Um, Heidi Rathman is here with me. I'm Elizabeth Flannery. Uh, I'm the President of Community Housing Development Corporation. And we were asked to just give a kind of a brief introduction um, of our company, of our proposed project and the timeline for our project, and just an explanation of the request in front of you this evening. Um, so Community Housing Development Corporation, we're a nonprofit um, affordable housing real estate development company. Um, we were founded in 1991 with a specific mission to preserve existing affordable housing and to create new opportunities for um, all kinds of affordable housing options. Um, we were founded in 1991, as I said. Since then, we have developed over 4,000 units of affordable housing in Minnesota, primarily in the seven county metro area. We are based in Minneapolis, and our office has been at the same location since 1991. Um, but we have several properties in greater Minnesota, Hibbing, um, Little Falls, Hutchinson. Um, so our properties, we are a long-term owner and manager. We don't, we, we are in it for the long-term because the core mission of our company is preservation and long-term preservation. We have a strong commitment to quality design and quality management over time. And we have a portfolio that is very healthy and is a good representation of that commitment in the communities that we're, we're located. Um, as you know, and as you've seen in your packet, we're proposing to redevelop the former Newell Middle School. Um, our project would be the historic preservation and adaptive reuse of that building, converting it into um, multifamily affordable, affordable apartments. Um, the plan right now, as it's being designed, um, consists of 55 units total. Um, there's 12 one-bedrooms, 33 two-bedrooms, and 10 three-bedrooms. Um, it's a very, it really converts to apartments nicely. Um, the apartments are, there's a lot of floor plans, very unique design, I think really nice units. Um, so it's a, it, the, the building does lend itself to this reuse really nicely. Uh, the primary financing tools that we're planning to use are low income housing tax credits and both federal and state historic tax credits, which we're in the process of securing at this time. Um, the schedule, we are, the state of Minnesota, the Minnesota Housing Finance Agency has a um, request for proposals every year in June, and that is when they allocate their low-income housing tax credits and the rest of the resources. So um, we're preparing our application for this project at this time, and that is the reason for our request to you right now. Um, speaking to the schedule uh, briefly, what happens is we submit our application, the state considers all the proposals, um, the tax credits are highly competitive, and it, the process of applying is, is really intense. And so um, we work really hard to put together as, as competitive of, of a proposal as we can. Um, we have a lot of experience doing this, and we've had a lot of success in this. We believe this project is very competitive and will point very favorably. Um, so the state generally makes their decisions in October. So what would happen is we would submit in um, June and work through that process with the state underwriters. Um, they make their decisions in October, and then we work with our lenders, which would be the tax credit investors and the other lenders, um, to close it. And ideally, we'd be able to close on all of the financing sometime maybe next April. It's typically four to six months um, working on the closing process and construction start, which in Minnesota, it generally makes sense to start in the spring of the year. Al although with a project <coughs> like this where we're not actually going into the ground, we could potentially start sooner than that. Um, so that's our proposed schedule. And what you have before you is a request um, really, really for support of our, applica our application to the state. There are certain requirements that the state has. Um, the first one that we're asking for your support on is a, is a threshold letter, and it's just kind of it's the threshold requirement that the state has from any applicant. And, it, and really what that is is a general letter of support, which you have a sample in your packet. Um, and it just confirms um, 
meeting the basic project criteria for Greater Minnesota, which is really that the community is in support of this and the community has defined a need for the project. That is the baseline criteria for th that the state will consider applications. The second thing in there is um, approval of a community development plan. And this is specific also to the competitiveness of our application and a requirement from Minnesota Housing Finance Agency. Um, they want this to be part of a community plan and really have community involvement in the decision. And so um, Heidi Rathman and our, of our organization and some consultants have been working with the community on developing that plan and that is before you tonight for approval. Um, that would add significantly to um, the probability of su a successful application for us. Um, the third thing is the intent to establish a TIF district. And the purpose of this is um, threefold. It, it, it helps significantly, again, in our application. It, has, it, it helps us in our financial readiness to proceed. Um, there, are, there are about 50 different pointing criteria, and that's a significant one. But it also goes to the general project feasibility and is, an, is a real strong statement of community support. So those are the three items before you tonight, and, and Heidi and I are here and available and happy to answer any questions you might have. Anybody have any questions? I guess I've got one right off the top. What's plan B? I mean, you said straight out this is a competitive grant. Right. Yeah, I didn't see you outlining anything on that. So it's a, it's a given that you'll pretty much receive something? No, that's an excellent question. It's not a given. Um, it is a competitive process, although, I mean, part of what we bring to the table um, is our experience being, you know, ha producing successful applications. Um, so plan B, we always have a plan B and probably a plan C. Plan B, um, if we're not successful, so, so they are limited. And so three things can happen, which we think will receive our full tax credit application. But it's possible that we won't, depending on what the competition is. And we don't know at this point you know, what other applications are going in or how it's going to compete against the rest of them. Um, we could get a partial allocation, which is, a, which is a really good thing. Because once you get a partial allocation, you're kind of in the queue for the remainder. It's just a limited resource at the state level. And so um, a, a partial allocation would mean we would go in in the winter for a supplemental allocation and that would probably push our timeline about six months later. Um, we have typically, you know, it's not uncommon for a project to go in two rounds and sometimes even three rounds. Um, three rounds is unusual, this project. If we, we may not get an allocation this time and we, then what we would do is resubmit at this time next year and we would be a, a year behind. But that's what we've negotiated on with um, the current owners in our purchase agreement is for that potentiality because it is it is real okay. we feel strongly that we're going to be in um, a good position this time next year we'll, we feel strongly we'll be starting construction but that's a possibility okay. any other questions um, just uh, you know, I'm fine entertaining a tiff because we've never received any tax money on the property you know prior mm -hmm. you know <laughs> so I mean and we need housing you know so mm -hmm. I mean those are all so I'm in support in that aspect, but just wanted to know what the other side was sure. if there was a plan B. And, and Brian, you had some concerns. Yeah, the about only, <coughs> Mr. President, City Councilors, the only uh, item that that uh, uh, I guess was expressed to me uh, was that uh, it actually is found in the uh, mayor's uh, letter, mayor's correspondence, and that this this part was actually <coughs> written by. Uh, uh, city staff so we can change any words we want to change on there uh, it's actually found on the very last page of that that letter and there's uh, it would be uh, page 149 of the council <coughs> packet and it just basically says the city of Noam has confirmed that the state's three department project will contribute to the goals of the cooperative develop plan uh, dated May 23rd, 2017. The plan included the following six approaches to address identified housing needs. Uh, the first one says provide additional tax credit <coughs> uh, housing through the development of the State Street Project. That's fine. Produce a mix of new housing in the Milford Heights. Produce, provide, promote, and promote. 
uh, if you actually look at the plan, it doesn't necessarily use the words, you know, produce. Produce is kind of a, a stronger word, saying we're going to do it. We're going to produce that product. <coughs> and um, I think for number two, we want to consider a mix of new housing because EDA has not made that decision yet. And item number three, we want to consider a mix of new housing units in Garden Terrace 3 if we do Garden Terrace 3 project. You know, it's, I just say tone those three words down. So two, three, and four would be uh, consider instead of produce or provide. That softens them up from our perspective because we're not committing to them. And it actually matches then the report that follows uh, where they talk about uh, uh, the act actual these projects. And I, and I think, you know, they use things like work with the EDA. You know, it doesn't say where EDA is going to do it. So it it matches the report by just changing those words. And that's all I would I would change in that letter. Mr. President, I it's just I don't semantics. But I understand there's three different action items that the council would need to consider. And I don't want to jump around. That was the last one. The second one, the resolution, and I think it's referring to the same thing. Um, all it states is that the city council adopts the Housing Needs Initiative Action Plan prepared by the HNI as the city's plan. I, I haven't seen this plan. It, well, it's attached. It's the one that came after the, pres uh, the mayor's letter, that Housing Needs Initiative Action Plan on page 150. Okay. And that's, that's why I say that's the plan that the local chamber, if you remember, the uh, they broke off into industrial and housing and different segments. This group then looked at our housing and came up with a plan. And many of the things that they talk about are, you know, I mean, they're, they're good things. Uh, well, that's, it's, a, it's a very lengthy document. And I, I don't know if everyone in the council has read it and if you're really ready to say this is going to be the plan because somebody at some point down the road is going to say you better act in accordance with your plan. And I just want, I mean, I, I do not want to hold this project up. I think I understand what you're saying. It's an excellent idea. You're in a timeline. But I also think the council needs to know what it's committing to here. Right. Be comfortable on, with that. On page uh, four of the plan, it'd be page 154 of your packet. At the very bottom, this is what I was going, trying to explain, was that B says, explore with the EDA the development and building of new tax credit units adjacent to Broadway House. Well, that you know, we can explore that. That's that's not a problem. <clears throat> but in the mayor's letter, it says we'll actually do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, I don't think mm -hmm. that's what the intent is. I think the intent is these issues that they bring up that we should look at. Well, I'm kind of okay with looking at them, but it doesn't commit us to anything. Kind of much less the EDA because the city council can't commit the EDA to anything uh, at this point in time because they're a separate uh, entity. <coughs> but yeah, I think you raised the point is that this really is not, it's not a city staff driven plan. It's, it's a separate <coughs> group's concept right. of what housing should look like in the city and the wall. Well, that Mary Ellen Domeyer, 916 South Jefferson Street, and a member of the Housing Needs Initiative Task Force that arose out of the Combined Chamber and the New Almeria Foundation retreat, visioning retreat last November. And uh, in working with uh, not just the tax credit project, for which we want support immediately because that application has to go in soon, we also took a look at what some other communities have done when they've applied for tax credit. So modeling our proposal here and you'll also see in there that it's subject to change as we develop the review of the new 2017 study that just came out it is subject to change but at this point to say that yep we can live with this and we are submitting it because it has to go through with the application that they will be providing and uh, if you've got other questions as to why some of the material is in there Dan is here he's chair of that particular right com <laughs> committee <laughs> and uh, Heather is here and she's been working on it and we've had other representation 
throughout the community that's a part of this whole effort. Many letters of support have come forth to get this particular tax credit project done. It's been 20 years since there's been a tax credit project here. Uh, we're down to 20 units. So we stand a good chance in getting this approved because of the need that's been identified, if that helps. I'm just, again, I don't want to interrupt, but the page 21, it's the city will provide staff time. Uh, city will consider, I mean, I think it's the same thing that the city manager was talking about. Um, there are some commitments in this, and if everyone on the council has had an opportunity to review it and is comfortable with it, it's just fine. I don't know, you know, I understand you've got a short timetable, but I don't know how long we've been working on this. You know, if it's coming in front of you tonight. Um, so anyway, I just want to make sure you're comfortable with what you're committing to. I'm Dan Brom. I'm 1014 Upper Wall High, and I'm the chairman of H&I, and I was one of the parties that help draft a plan. Uh, the only thing I wanted to add to what Mary Ellen has already said is that uh, the basis uh, of the uh, plan that was developed really started from the 2012 housing study that was provided. Um, we weren't fortunate enough to have the 2017 study um, because it was just released this past week. So many of the needs that were uh, addressed in this uh, study have been around for at least the last five years. So it's not like um, these issues that are being raised now are something new. And I think it's imperative on us to, to consider that. Uh, I have no problem in changing some of the wording um, if, if the council is skittish about um, the word commitment. Um, but I think it doesn't change the fact of the housing crisis that we're in at this time and what uh, this particular project going forward would mean for our community. So I'd, I'd ask that you consider that because at this point, if, if that plan isn't included with their application, I, I think the chances of its success probably are diminished greatly. I'll just add one more postscript where it comes to city will be involved almost every project that's in there obviously in some manner shape or form is going to require EDA involvement or zoning adjustment or replatting of this that or the other thing uh, so from that perspective obviously the city will be involved in some aspect or another and it means city staff we are attempting to demonstrate that not only the city as a governance entity but the citizens of New Ulm uh, through the business community and so forth that everyone is behind this particular project was there is it possible to state have the council say that they agree with the goals of the plan without adopting the entire plan verbatim I, I mean because you yes. need this for your application accept the plan I, I saw that the word adopt was in here but if you will accept the plan as a tool for us to use going forward in concert with the 2017 study just received. It's the same thing. Or a resolution supporting the plan even. Yes. I think is acceptable. I mean, just as, just your. Because that, that's a big difference a, the, from adopting the plan. That's the yeah. 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 Uh, Dave Schnober, Community Development Director. Um, I've been involved in this process in the preparation of the plan along with. Uh, Heather uh, Bragel from city staff. Um, I'm very comfortable with what um, we've presented uh, before you this evening. Um, what we have attempted to do is simply provide some different directions that we will explore. We may not have the staff to do all of these things. We probably don't have the financial resources to do all these things. But what we have done is identify areas that we feel deserve further exploration <coughs> and investigation on the part of the staff. And we are not envisioning that we're adding staff to do these things. These are activities that would be undertaken by the staff that the city currently has. Roger, could we also include, uh, you know, accept the plan which can be modified from time to time by the city council. I mean, that-, that well, we got, I think we've got to have some outs. I'm looking at, you know, page 25 of the plan. Um, city council will establish the TIF district November 2017. I mean, do you want to, I mean, I think, 
doing the TIF for this project makes a lot of sense. But are you committing to this tonight? I mean, it, there's some real specific obligations here. Um, and I understand, they, if you need this, you know, it's one of the things that's on the agenda yeah. is, is the question of the TIF. And so what we're doing with regards to tax increment financing, it's kind of a two-step process. And we're taking step one tonight by indicating that if they are successful in securing um, the tax credit financing, that we will, in fact, then establish a tax increment financing district. And the numbers that you find um, on the report have all been uh, prepared by the city's financial consultant. So we've gone through the same process to date that we would typically do for a tax increment project. So nothing has changed from that standpoint. But um, we're gonna stop at this point and then if they're successful, we would pick up the tax increment district and in the resolution, there is la sufficient language that it is still subject to the council's approval. And uh, we would also have a development agreement for this project. So it's going to be really no different than any other TIF districts. Normally what we do is we do everything on one night. What we're doing instead with this project is we're doing it in two different time periods potentially. As Larry made the comment, I think we would support it. I don't think there's any chance that we would and so that first step wouldn't be out of line. Yeah. Well I certainly appreciate this project. This is um, we are at a crisis stage as already been stated tonight with housing in our community. There's been talk of needing 500 housing units um, <coughs> that we desperately need in our community not only for our workforce but our <coughs> people that want to move into our community. Um, I'm glad this project is here. I support this project that's here. And I'm going to go ahead and, and get this moving because we want this project here. So I'm going to offer the first um, motion, offering a resolution, or excuse me, offering a resolution, waive the reading, expressing the city and New Ulm's intent to establish and administer a housing TIF district for the construction of 55 <coughs> units of affordable housing in the former New Ulm Middle School building located at 15 North State Street. Second. We got a motion and a second to offer a resolution, waive the reading. Any more discussion? And none. Finance director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Mack? Yes. <coughs> Councilor Schultz? Councilor Schultz? Yes. Councilor Christian? Yes. <coughs> Schmitz? Yes. Motion carries. I have one more question for the city attorney. I always concerned with that. On the next one, which you said is very waive the reading, can you use accept the housing needs initiative plan? Yes. Well, that, that makes a big difference. Okay, so I'm gonna offer a resolution, waive the reading, accepting the housing needs initiative plan prepared by the housing needs initiative for the city of New Ulm. And that'll be sufficient for your purposes? Yes, Correct. second. Okay. We got a motion, a second offer resolution, waive the reading according to the changes. Any more discussion? Hey, are we gonna bring that back at a later date once we've had more time to review it and maybe have Roger go through Oh, I think we're gonna have a lot of meetings on this. Yeah, sure, <laughs> we could expect people reading. <coughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Any more discussion? Seeing none, finance director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Mack? Yes. Councilor Schultz? Yes. Councilor Christian? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Motion carries. Item number C. I'll take a stab at that <laughs> one too. I'll offer a resolution to waive the reading to authorize the submittal of a letter of support for the construction of 55 units of affordable housing in the former middle school building located at 15 North State Street. Second. With the inclusion uh, of consider instead of with the changes term yeah. consider instead of uh, provide on two three and four of yes. that letter. Yes. Oh yes, I'm okay with. It. Are we okay yeah. with that? That's fine. Yep. Second. We have a motion and a second off the resolution. Waived reading. Any more discussion? Seeing none. Finance director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Mack? Yes. Councilor Schultz? Yes. Councilor Christian? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Motion carried. Does that mean I have to sign it or? Okay. If that's your job. <laughs> <laughs> if it's the mayor's report. Thank you for coming tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor letter? <laughs> This is All right. Too serious. Um, Go ahead, Brad. Yeah, I meant I, everything we can talk about specific things, but I meant to uh, remind myself that within that plan, you you saw that we were offering uh, 
right, we'll just tell a local <laughs> financial incentive for this for this project of twenty thousand dollars, and that's a, a TIF funded thing. Uh, of the other things that we could possibly do, uh, was if I can find it now, uh, building permit fee adjustment, <coughs> plan review fee adjustment, parkland dedication fee, curb cut fee, stormwater permit. Uh, of those five things, I don't know that we want to do the building permit fee. I know we. I think we've done a, a plan review fee uh, reduction because it was a big project and it seemed like it was, you know, appropriate. Uh, Parkland dedication fee is uh, is the council interested in? I mean, you think the the prior use of it was uh, I don't know 300 kids or something or, you know, and they could go to parks. You know, this is going to be 55 apartments. It's all the parks that. And not all the parks, but the uh, parks that are close to the project have all been developed for years. And it's not like this is a new subdivision with right. a new park that you take that new housing uh, parkland dedication fee and then build a new park. So the question is, is there anything you want to do with those? Uh, my recommendation, if you're going to do anything, the park dedication fee had the, the most likely result of that uh, of, of a potential reduction of all of the five uh, I know uh, park and rec director would probably not uh, encourage that but uh, but the bottom line is here all the parks around that facility have been developed for you know decades right. yep. if not 150 years and that's nineteen thousand two hundred fifty dollars uh, you know maybe you leave five thousand in it and this is something that could come back to us at a later date. reduce it. Mm -hmm. uh, Dave Stormer, Community Development Director. Um, the city manager indicated that um, there was a $20,000 amount that um, uh, could be provided to the project as a local contribution. I think the thought was that that 20000 would be used to reduce some of the expenses that are being talked about right okay. now. So anything you would do would then further reduce those um, local um, local costs. Okay. Thank you, Dave. When when do you have to know any, about any additional? Okay, thank you. Yep. All right, we'll go on to item 5B. Consider resolution approving the further implementation of a local performance measurements system development by the city, by the council on local results and innovations. I'll offer that resolution. Second. We got a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Offer the resolution. Waived reading. Sorry. I think we've, been, we've liked it, so I don't okay. see a need to stop it. Finance Director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Mack? Yes. Councilor Schultz? Yes. Councilor Christian? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Motion carries. Item 5C, consider a motion to schedule a joint City Council Public Utility Commission informational meeting for June 20th, 2017 at 3.30 p.m. to discuss the auditing or audited financial statements for the year ending December 31st, 2016. I'll offer the motion. Second. second. We got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, aye. no. Motion carries. Item 5D, consider resolution approving the MnDOT Master Partnership Contract Agreement number 1028038. Steve? Mr. President, this is a uh, rather lengthy agreement that <clears throat> takes care of uh, any transactions between the state of Minnesota, MnDOT, 
and the city of New Ulm with regard to uh, grants that have to do with transportation projects such as uh, state aid monies or federal monies. <coughs> In circumstances such as that, there are certain material testing and other requirements that the state takes care of us for on a on a fee basis and um, that agreement that we have in place right now I believe was a five-year agreement due to expire so they've extended a new uh, agreement uh, master partnership agreement if there's any work orders that take place outside of those kind of normal uh, issues that would be negotiated and brought back to the City Council as well some of those might be like if there was a flooding situation or something and we needed some help so uh, it's pretty standard uh, they're they've been very good to work with since we do have it expiring June 30th I'll offer the resolution way the reading approving the state of Minnesota partnership contract and authorize the city manager and finance director to execute the agreement for an in behalf of the city of Nome and authorize the city engineer to negotiate work order contracts pursuant to the master contract Second. We got a motion, second off the resolution, waived reading. Any more discussion? Seeing none. Finance director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Mack? Yes. Councilor Schultz? Yes. Councilor Christian? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Motion carries. Item 5E, consider motion authorized a request for proposals to create an ADA transition plan. <coughs> Mr. President, in this case, we'd like uh, authorization from the City Council to go out for requests for proposals to create a, uh, a uh, formal ADA transition plan. These, these plans have, uh, <coughs> are necessary to uh, secure any funding for transportation improvements from state or federal funding. They are something that's required for uh, any any city that has more than 55 employees and have uh, public infrastructures uh, that fall under the ADA federal requirements. So I would recommend that we move ahead with the request for proposals and we bring back any costs or, or uh, results that we receive from those requests. I'll offer that motion. Second. We got a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Do you have a timeline on that? Uh, it's included in the, uh, I think it's probably the, in August, they'd have to look at the proposal. Mm -hmm. There's a, okay. there's a submittal date in there. So it'll come back to us sometime in yes. August or September. Yeah. All right. Probably Thank September. You. Any more discussion? <coughs> Excuse me. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item 5F, consider resolution authorizing the request from the heart of New Ulm downtown action team to recon figure the benches at the center and Minnesota Street intersections. Mr. Brady Golden is here. I think he's the uh, next person up to he's talk to wait on behalf a long of time. Cindy Winters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be a pretty easy lift compared to what you had to decide already. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. So I think you have the proposal in front of you with the images. Um, we, this was the number one request. We did a survey of the downtown business owners. Um, the number one item on there was to increase green space and seating in the downtown district. I think green space is a much more difficult lift than adding additional seating. So we looked at what the seating that already existed and being conscious of taxpayer spending. Um, these benches, benches are located below the mall. They're facing the parking ramp. I don't think they get utilized. If you look at them, there's very little wear and tear on them. Um, I don't think a lot of people sit there and watch the pigeons, so all we're requesting <laughs> is to move those benches into uh, the busiest, one of the busiest corners downtown and reconfigure them with an additional table to increase, increase seating and give people an opportunity to enjoy a meal downtown, maybe work on a laptop, have a cup of coffee, what have you. Um, we put together a sketch. I looked at a couple, one vendor or a couple vendors it's about $400 for the table. That won't cost the city any money. We've got funding set up for that. I don't know if the city has worked with, you know, you get your park equipment. If you have an additional vendor you prefer us to work with or can get some deal on that, we'd be open to that. Um, it's a 36 inch table and the height will be appropriate. We have about eight feet width of space to use um, in the existing area and the benches are each two feet long and it's a three-foot table so 
we've got some wiggle room there, about a foot and a half at least. <clears throat> and I'd be happy to entertain any questions you might have. I was in attendance at the at this meeting, and it, granted, again, it is a, like a pilot project, a test project. It's not something we're ordering in for the whole downtown area. I, I actually did like the idea. Uh, question the city engineer. I had looked at it. We still maintain our ADA on the sidewalk, whatnot. It's not really chewing up any more property. They're just kind of realigning and turning. Uh, they discussed moving the pots, the plants, the Christmas tree issues. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the one question, you know, who is doing the installation of the benches and tables? I did not want to answer that at that meeting. I, if the city's going to do it, or has that been? I think I, that would be up for the council to decide. Um, I don't think that's a real big project to put in a couple yeah, benches. I mean, so yeah. no, we have done them in the past. Take care of that. I've mm -hmm. talked to uh, Mr. Curry, and he stated that uh, you know taking them off of where they're currently bolted down and they're going to have to probably repair the concrete underneath those chairs because you can't have the bolt sticking up mm -hmm. uh, and then <clears throat> bolting them down at the new location is not uh, a very large project it's going to take somebody a little bit of time but that's in, in equipment not a <clears throat> not a big deal uh, i'm more uh, concerned i think with the probably the design or the style and the construction materials of the table because I think you know when you look at the uh, the bars that have their seating area outside you know they're required to take their you know literally supposed to take their chairs in and bring them out and uh, so they they don't sit out there 24 hours a day if this table were to sit out there 24 hours a day first you know it's got to be bolted to the concrete also but I think it also has to be able to take somebody standing on it when you know at three in the morning. And so my concern is we don't put like in the picture a <coughs> post table with four you know struts out on on the concrete. That's that's probably going to last a week before somebody <coughs> makes it lean one direction or another. Mm -hmm. So my concern is. Do we want, you know, uh, color, design, style, or construction materials to enter into this discussion? Because uh, I, I don't want be them better. to go out there and get wrecked within three days either. So they got to be sturdy. Yeah. Yeah. The, <clears throat> your, uh, do they have any issues with that? Well, was city approved? Yeah. Um, like I said, what we looked at or what I found was the park catalog. It's the website where they sell equipment that's made for this sort of load. Um, it has a base with the mounting brackets on it already. Um, this would be similar quality that you'd put in a park of any sense, so I'm sure it can handle the loads of somebody standing on it. I understand your concerns, but um, the image on there was just a representation. It wasn't the actual quality or build of the table that we we're going to put well, in the Then project. I would just recommend that maybe the, the design that you pick, uh, you know, maybe get, gets run past the city engineer and sure. you know, say, yeah, that looks like a sturdy piece and be done with it. And then the only thing, the other thing was the color too. We just picked the red table because we found that image online. They come in multiple different colors. Um, I know the benches and the metal rails are green. I don't know if we want to match that or if you have any input on that, you can go black and make it neutral. Or I think that's it. something that Mr. Kaler can work through. Mr. Kaler, <laughs> Mr. Kaler, <laughs> Mr. Kaler's into <laughs> colors. Just to, color. yeah. Between him and the mayor, I think they'll come up with right. I think they can too. I, I sense we're going to have an interesting staff meeting tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I think they could be alternate colors. All different ones that are all colors. No, I've been periodically joking about these benches since I've been a city councilor nine years ago. It's like, why? Who put these in? Mm -hmm. Whoever sits at them to look at a parking lot with pigeons? I just. Um, so I'm glad they're getting out of there and getting some use because I, I I've asked the the property owners across the street. Have you ever seen anybody in that bench ever? No. So there's two of them there. I'm glad they're getting moved and get some good use. So, And I um, should just want to include, too, the intent of this project is to um, build upon this in future dates if this if becomes a successful configuration. And we that's why we looked at this. I think we, there's other opportunities that we could reconfigure the existing benches I agree. on multiple corners to make it more of a conversational setting in the future. But this is intended yeah. to be a pilot run of that future concept. Uh, would that be... Offer the resolution way the reading allowing the reconfiguration of the benches at Center and Minnesota Street intersection and allowing for two tables to be installed as proposed in the project description and also allowing the city engineer to 
go over with the uh, the committee the type of table and also the color design. I'll second. Got a motion and a second off resolution. Grade weed. I have weed. Oh, I have a ahead, question. Mayor. Does is there an ordinance in the city of New Orleans that the bench, benches have to be facing a certain way? There was something about naming and putting a name on some benches a few years ago and. Is that I'm, some I'm not an ordinance on that, Mr. Kaler? Not that I'm aware. Of. You're making that up. Maybe no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd, ra I'd rather get it now than have a special meeting because we didn't fi we didn't find an ordinance. We'll blame the city attorney. We didn't do a lot of No more discussion. Finance director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Mack? Yes. Councilor Schultz? Yes. Councilor Christian? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Motion carries. Item 5G, consider resolution approving the request from Gene. How do you say that? Pardon? Procniak. Okay. Brown County Auditor, Treasurer, to vacate the easement area between Lot 9, Lot 10, Block 2, Lakeside Village Edition. Seems pretty self explanatory. I don't have any concerns. I'm going to offer the resolution waive the reading. Second. We got a motion and second off the resolution waive the reading. Any more discussion? Anybody else does? Mr. President, there are some uh, recommended conditions that the, uh, the uh, property owners would build, actually pull a building permit. Well, they record the resolution, record resolution. Yep, authorizing right. the easement, and the easement area is effective upon the issuance of the building permit. So. With that, I'll add that to my motion. No more solution. discussion? Finance Director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Mack? Yes. Councilor Schultz? Yes. Councilor Christian? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Motion carries. Item 6A, consider acceptance of a list of claims paid and approve the list of claims to be paid. List of claims <coughs> paid in amount of $900 $77,439.23 and approve a list of claims to be paid in amount of $550,119.59. I'll offer the motion. Second. Second. We got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion carries. All right. We have a addendum for tonight, so we need a motion to. I'll offer a motion to spend the rules for action on the addendum. Second. We got a motion to second to suspend the rules for the action on the addendum. All in favor say aye. 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 Those no. Motion carries. Okay. The motion number one A or er, yeah. consider a motion to receive a report from the Joint Police Fire Animal Control Storage Building Project. Mr. Grumman's. Mr. President, City Councilors, uh, as you note that uh, the project was approved on December 20th of 2016. It consisted of a three-function building, police department storage, fire department storage, and city animal control, uh, which is our kennel for stray dogs and those that are picked up by the police department. Well, that's not true either. By the uh, <clears throat> animal control officer, just happens to be a police officer. Uh, after the project was started, it was brought to our attention that the desired property was less than 1,000 feet from a residentially zoned area. City Code 914, Sub 7, Commercial Kennel Regulations uh, basically states in A, all buildings occupied by a commercial kennel shall be located at least 1,000 feet from the boundary of any residential district except the RA Agricultural Zone. The property we're looking at is in an RA zone but across the street to the west is a R1 residential zone. In order to meet this requirement, the building would have to be moved 400 feet east. If you look on the map, past the sewer lift station that's found there, which, is, which puts it in the flood fringe area at the site, it would uh, basically wouldn't work for the full three function building. Uh, the city recently uh, required uh, two commercial kennels to meet that 1,000 foot city code requirement. Um, so we felt we had to abide by it also. Other sites we looked at to shift the kennel to uh, was move the, the entire project to the compost, uh, to the compost dog pound battery trap area. And that would have eaten up a very large amount of the city uh, land used by the battery. Uh, 
Option two, move to city-owned land in the cemetery, which was not seriously considered. These are just areas that are 1,000 feet away from R1s. Option three, move the project to the wastewater treatment facility, and not uh, a desired outcome from a PUC perspective. And nor mine, because of the we don't know what the future brings as far as wastewater treatment, and we may need that land for that particular purpose. And then option four, keep the storage, the fire and police at the preferred <coughs> site, and split off the kennel and locate it at the existing uh, dog pound, which is at the compost dog pound battery and trap area. That's what the uh, plan was. Uh, the <coughs> site for the kennel just had the dirt removed and the gravel placed, and the building uh, that houses the police storage and fire storage uh, is getting pretty well close to being uh, finished although there are a few things left to do. The unanticipated additional costs at that project, uh, although the site was perceived as flat, it did have a slope and it required an additional 8,000 in fill to level the site out so that uh, you either didn't bury the building half in the ground or you know, have a slope coming out the door. Uh, the new dog pound at the location at the uh, compost dog pound battery trap area was identified to be close enough to the existing water source which is found at the Battery Dog Pound building. To keep the utilities down, the building was uh, set back in line with the existing Battery Dog Pound building and allows easy access from the existing driveway that uh, would then split the two buildings. The remaining green area, approximately 2.25 acres, is still available for other uses. The Battery Building roadway is located on approximately six-tenths of an acre. Uh, The issues that we uh, were confronted with was relocate the dog pound portion of the project to meet the city ordinance. Uh, probably <coughs> will result in slight additional cost. Relocate the entire storage and dog pound to acceptable locations. Not really finding one that meets the criteria that we, we own and meets the setbacks from residential, as you note, the ones I pointed out. And the budgetary fiscal issues. The original budget was $175,000. The final anticipated police uh, fire building budget is $154,000, which is just a storage shed for both of those uh, entities. With uh, In that cost is 8,000 additional costs for the uh, dirt due to the slope fill. The estimated cost of the dog, dog pound is uh, approximately $32,000. We have uh, two quotes on that. And uh, with those two dollar figures added together, uh, we're projected uh, to be uh, $11,000 over budget, of which 8,000 is the cost from the slope and the fill. So we're about $3,000 over budget by splitting those two, uh, that building into two instead of having one building. Uh, the maps that you have, uh, the one is, uh, Compost, dog kennel, battery trap area uh, shows an aerial view. The 22 by 50 outline that there's a little bump out. That's where the dog kennel would be located. The uh, remaining 2.25 acres uh, of green space, and then you've got approximately six tenths of an acre for the roadway and uh, the battery building. You'll see. Well, about where the six in the dot is, there's a uh, roof line that juts out to the left. That's the existing dog kennel, uh, dog pound. The, uh, the battery is looking at, re you know, removing that <coughs> roof line and area and fixing up some things that are found within that area. The next map uh, is just an exploded view of the uh, problem we ran into with the uh, fire police storage shed location and where the dog pound kennel would, would be required to be located to be a thousand feet away approximately from the residential zone uh, just west of it. So that is the recap of what happened. Uh, I did have conversation 
uh, with John Fritchie because he came in and ta was talking about the uh, removing and fixing up of the the battery facility. And uh, you know, uh, I've had I think one call, and I think you guys, maybe the city council, has had more calls or or more people contact you saying that uh, they didn't appreciate the uh, they're not being included in the discussion. Uh, error on our part uh, we figured it, it was city property uh, the battery is on city property the trap range is on city property uh, didn't see it as a uh, as a monumental issue given all the extra green space that's located out there that can be used so that's uh, that's where we find ourselves today and if we don't want it want that facility right there uh, it can be moved it just adds cost but it, it has to stay somewhere in that on that city property and probably close to the road comment I guess that I've talked to different people on it one thing is we're spending hundred and fifty four thousand dollars for a storage shed technically it had to go out on sealed bids correct because it's over hundred thousand not necessarily is it an over hundred thousand Bids. We acted as a general contractor, and we, you know, break those things out. So we did the plumbing, just like we do the EDA houses. We act as a general, and we just get the uh, concrete guy bid. We get the electrical bid. We get the so because bid. I guess the, since it was in the budget for one hundred seventy-five thousand dollars, the city council has no more say is what really took place. We spent $154,000 on a storage shed that never came back to the city council for any approving of any bids. I mean, if the fire department wants a $40,000 fire truck and they budget for it, they come back to us and say, now we're going to go out and buy this truck. Now we just put up a $154,000 building without no say whatsoever from the city council. Well, the motion that was authorized was authorized city staff to proceed in design and construction of a joint fire police and animal control building but that was the budget what's that that was during the budget time no nope, that was the motion that was done on December, December 20th 2016 mm -hmm. I think we're the concern that I would have as a city councilor is on that day we approved one building three functions and and I literally found out from somebody just simply calling me saying do you know they're building a dog park and or dog pound and I'm like mm, separate from the other building I'm like no we, we didn't approve that we approved one building with three functions I think at that stage when we found out or the city staff found out we couldn't have it as close to that area as we could because of of the ordinance uh, potential violation at that point it should have came back to us with potential options um, would we have agreed with what the city staff did in the outcome of this maybe probably but I don't like the fact the city staff made the decision to just create a whole new plan without us knowing anything about it nothing I, I, I have real problems with that real problems with that we didn't approve that we approved one building because we, we could have I would assume it's Rogers comment but I would assume somewhere along the line had it been brought back we could say okay let's change the ordinance and allow could the have, dog we could have looked at that built Absolutely. within that distance as long as we notified the people up front we could have probably mm -hmm. done it I mean this thousand feet I don't know what they did with the, the dog kennel we got down for on Valley Street there at not a dog kennel it's a what do you call it uh, Pups Playland yeah the mm -hmm. uh, Humane Society Humane Society, Humane Society. we got do Society. dogs down there too yeah and that's dang well within oh. a mm -hmm. couple hundred feet of people so I mean I think we could have probably did some yeah the uh, Humane Society um, purchased that building in 2003 the kennel ordinance was adopted in December of 2012 so that's where the 1,000 foot setback came. Mm -hmm. So prior to that time, there was no standard. Matter of fact, prior to that time, kennels were only allowed in a commercial zoning district. Oh, yeah. And so we expanded it to include industrial zoning districts as well to try to get it you know, away from residential areas. 
but if we wanted to right now, we could. What I'm saying is, we could change the ordinance and put it right where that other building is. If you wanted to modify the, you can modify any ordinance that you want to. Right. Yeah. I think our uh, the staff position on that particular topic was very recently we just required two other kennels to abide by the thousand foot and we felt it was a little hypocrit hypocritical <laughs> hypocritical hypocritical critical <laughs> uh, to say you guys got to abide by the thousand but we're going to change the rules so we don't have to and we just went like you know I got a little ethic issue here you know do we abide by our own rules or do we make other people do it but we don't and so we just said well we we forced those people to do the thousand feet what are our options and and you know counselor uh, schultz you know may be right he, he we brought it back that made it all out. Said, yeah there's only one option we have and that's putting it at at uh the, the compost site with the battery now the question is where on that site could we put it that would well, make it better and we i would have guess we somebody would have said has anybody talked to the battery about this what does mnr paving have have they have any concerns about their compost issue um trap range do they have any concerns about where we could put i mean i would guess some of that would have came up in our conversation which maybe would have alleviated this particular agenda item tonight that people are not happy about how this process happened that they weren't involved in the decision making and and it's so hindsight's always better but my biggest concern is that we approved one building and now we're approving or now we're building two and I I, I that we didn't approve that we have one gentleman standing here we have a gentleman here battery uh, Tony Art, new on battery uh, authorized at the last meeting to come and speak with uh, you mr. president and the council um, our concern was the fact that this dog pound was uh, going to be placed in its location as of right now, um, taking away space for us to safely practice hitch and harness horses. Um, we, at the very least, as Councillor Schultz has admitted, would have liked to have been approached as to a compromise. Um, using the current facility that's there, expanding on it, or Putting any sort of addition would have probably been more beneficial. Unfortunately, over the Memorial Weekend, uh, in sight of the mayor of all people also, uh, one of our members was injured and he very easily could have been also while trying to avoid this uh, foundation that was placed without any knowledge to anyone. Um, so we just wanted to come, come before you and express our concern that this had happened without um, at the very least being approached and finding a solution collectively. Uh, that's all I have to say on it. Thank you for letting me speak. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> well, I'll take full responsibility for the air on communicating this back. It's, uh, it was not our intent to keep anybody out of the loop. It was our intent to uh, do what we were instructed to do Again, as, as you noted, satisfy three particular things. We ran into a problem with one. There's really only one location in the city that works, and uh, it, that's all I can say. I, I'm sorry. So where, where is this building project at? Where's the, the fire the fire building, if we want to call it that? Where Where is that project at in the development? That's stage? probably pretty well almost done. What, 90% Elwood or? And where's the dog pound? The dog project? pound just has the gravel foundation poured, poured in place so that when the concrete comes, you can, you can uh, put it on top of that. We can, we can move it to a different location, but it's, we're, we're trying to hook up to the water sure. uh, in the existing building. Uh, you know, I can, I can move it over towards the, the road that goes into the, the, the compost. It just means I'm going to have to have a 150 feet of water pipe to deal with. Did we make the police fire building smaller by reducing the cost? Elwood, yeah, did we reduce the size of the storage facility? Building official, no, we didn't. Uh, it's still the 
um, 100 by 50. The dock pound was going to take up additional space in the police side of the storage building, so they gained space in storage. So is the dog pound still the same size that it was originally signed as well? That stayed the same? Um, or did it? It was supposed yes, to be. Yes, it, the dog pound itself is 12 by 50 with a 10-foot overhang for the dog run. Okay. So the, mm -hmm. the footprint of the building is 22 by 50 for part of it. Yeah. And the rest of the, the end of it was going to be used for um, cats. Okay. Did... Do you tell me, sir, that uh, the little white dots, the dog training, uh, is that the dog training little kennels, not little kennels, but little buildings, that they, they are going to be moved? Well, yeah. The If you notice where the fire police storage shed is, there's a, some white stuff just to the lower right hand across the, dog, or the, the bike path. That's the training equipment. And they've got these white boxes over by the, the, the road that goes into the compost area. Uh, not really sure what those are used for other than maybe hiding stuff so the dogs can smell. Uh, but they can be moved anywhere, uh, anywhere on our property. They could be moved over where the other exercise equipment is already located. So that can be, you know, removed. And then there's some white things further out there that... that <coughs> can be removed uh, Tony art new on battery um, to go along with what I said earlier if you would like we are more than willing to give up any option that we were given to secure that additional space onto that shed if you want to do an expansion onto the current facility uh, I don't know what it takes to move roadways and such it's just a gravel um, loop path per se but um, it might save costs to just add on to the existing facility um, for the function that you need. We're more than willing to work with you in that respect too. <coughs> um, it just it gets difficult with having horses and harnesses and teams and then a, a building in the middle of uh, practice space to allow safe functioning. So if that's a thing that would help you not only reduce costs but uh, be willing to work with, um, we are willing to give up that space that was already discussed with us to use as additional storage to uh, have as a expansion of the current facility. While you're up there, may I just ask a question? Uh, is any of the remaining two, you know, over two acres usable for what your purposes are? Why, so why is it that one section is the only section that is interested you're Certainly. interested in so if any of you are familiar with horses um, the fact that they can see the entrance points to either a uh, stable or any sort of pasture land makes them if you want to say jittery and um, less easier to control because their main purpose after they're done doing work of any kind is to retreat back to those places where there's food and water and if you want to say um, safety uh, to either move about freely or to be able to provide those nourishments. If you were to come out the back end of where the stables are right now, you would be um, requiring the horses to see that spot and having people put in the position where they're going to constantly be holding those horses back from trying to re-enter that. Now, there is a gate there to help dissuade that, but... Um, we're talking three to four thousand pound animals and a little pin on a gate isn't going to hold them back from getting back in there. Uh, the other function is the fact that when you come out where the garage door is, all of the equipment is right s inside there. So we can just simply bring it straight out, make a quick right turn, and it's all staged right there. Um, the horses then, when we get going, are driven straight forward and take a left past that uh, uh, shed. I don't know. It used to be where the uh, people would take the license plates numbers down when the city still had the facility. Um, and then we make our left turn, go onto the roadway, and proceed out to uh, the parade routes or wherever we need to go with our equipment using horses. I hope that. Mm -hmm. 
there is some value in giving some thought to just as um, Tony mentioned, maybe just remodeling and and rebuilding our current kennel. Is that an option? I think it's an option. It was the one that we decided not to do <laughs> when we first came to the city council. But if that's what you want us to do. Well, I think before there was a nice idea having that three in that building, but we don't have that option anymore. So now does it make sense to back up and say, let's just remodel what we have and make it look nice and and I know we're small, it's too small, and um, and it certainly couldn't <coughs> use an expansion. I guess I, I don't know if the animal control officer's not here, but it'd be interesting to hear what... I believe it's it's going to have to be... It's not just a remodel job, it's Pretty double, good. if not Demo. triple yeah. the size of what we currently have. And everything has to be torn out because the concrete and everything is... Yeah, it's all, sh all shot. All bad, so okay. You know, I mean, that's that's what led us to say let's let's do this because it's substandard. Now, if you tear it all out and expand it, you know, anything can be done. Sure. It's just how much that would cost compared to we don't, new construction. We've not signed a contract to build this, or have we? Nope. We couldn't um, take a look at that as an option if my fellow counselors think that that's appropriate. I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there to see what that would look like you already have a foundation in place right so no what's in place is gravel, uh gravel. black dirt removed and gravel yeah. and that was done by city crews okay so but we could pull pull back yet and still maybe go that route but at least look at that's an option i don't know well we can take a look at it i mean what do you what the rest do you we'll think do, we'll do whatever you want us to do I guess I agree. If, I mean, being we aren't out anything, if we want to look at other options, what might be possible out there to accommodate the battery in a better manner on that piece of property? Mm -hmm. Maybe engage them in a conversation of what might work. I think that's why we're the subject is here tonight. Was we need to communicate. Right. We haven't been communicating with anybody, you know, on this project, as far as city council or anybody. So <clears throat> I think now if we're going to communicate, we'd better start. Well, if we would avoid the possibility of seeing Mr. Fritchie on the ground again, um, I'd like you to do that. Just take another look and see, is there a different or better location? And you may come up and say... It might not be. Right. The, this is the only logical place yep. because you've got water, and all of those other expenses. So this may be what you end up saying, this is the best place, but the battery would have a chance to put their four cents in. And so I'm gonna offer, so we can keep this moving tonight, offer a motion to the city staff, take a second look at a placement of the dog pound kennel and out in that same location, but um, bring back to us an option or to it as soon as they can so I don't I know we don't want to hold up on this too long second we got a motion and a second any more discussion seeing none all in favor say aye 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 opposed no motion and Mr. Carried. Chair as long as we're on this topic so I, I want to make sure we're real clear on this we do have our our city attorney here um, are we correct in what we're stating that if it's a major change that that should come back in front of the council well, I think it, the problem is how you define major change. Right. I mean, it's and then is it the general person on the street considering it a major change is the test, or that's whatever you think is a major change, and you obviously think it is, and you're going from one building to two. That's understandable, but there's not there's no bright line or easy right. definition. They're making decisions every day. And Sometimes they, I've heard people use that if you approach a normal citizen on the street, excuse me, would they consider that a major change? Yes or no. An average person would say yes. That should come back in front of the council. But otherwise, it's the city. Uh, it's our chair of the board that would make that decision. Correct? Could be either way. Well, it's the council that's going to decide if if you've got concerns about modifications that are made. I think you know staff all the time will make minor adjustments oh, as they're implementing something. And yep. at what point is it no longer minor? And in the past, we, when we've done, you know, large projects, you know, even $5 million project, you sit back 
and I've asked the council for this, is for authorization for 5% of oh, the yeah. project mm -hmm. uh, to be able to make change orders Absolutely. At, uh, on the day, on the minute that you have to make them without yes. stopping the project. Well, 5% on a, on a $5 million project, it, it's a chunk of change, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but 5% on this project would have been but we do ten thousand dollars. We just know. did it not that long ago on a fire truck for fourteen hundred dollars. Made change orders. I mean, it, it has happened. So we do make change orders when we go out for bids or whatever, on a heck of a lot less than. Yeah, but what I, we did I here. believe that change order was already done already, just like well, it might, many of the yeah. other ones that cut at least it's brought it before the council. That's where it's coming from. Yeah, you know. At least we'll try and do it, better. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. No more business. Meeting adjourned.